Hey everybody, this is Gorman on Gore, a spoilerific horror film podcast. I'm your host, Peter Gorman. With me is my co-host with the co-most, Jacob. Oh, I don't like Sound that. Sound check the nice people, Jacob. No, I, no, I, don't, I don't like co-most. That's not... No. <laughs> cut, cut that out. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> well, Jacob, you know how this goes. Every episode, we take turns choosing a horror film to pick apart. And then we spoil it, and we rate it. This was your pick. Please, if you would, tell us what your pick was this week. I chose the ranking. (laughs) (laughs) No, um, yeah, I chose uh, the ranking. As far as I can tell, straight to Tubi TV movie based off of the creepypasta legend known as The Rake. Alright, so like it says here, the final requires us to go into the field and study a chosen myth of legend. You guys okay here? Hey, we're good, thanks. Did I sound a good night for camping? Why? <laughs> Just isn't. fight what you can't kill. Anything you think of, I've already done it. Except this thing ain't no urban legend. The spider's urban legend. How does Joshua Tree feel? I think it feels... (laughs) Alive. It's a creepy pasta. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, I. I mean, good lord, why? Why else would I have chosen this? Here, here's the thing. I have a lot. While I was watching this movie, I, I wrote copiously, and a lot of it is, "Damn you, Jacob! Why did you have me watch this?" I uh, okay. interspersed with, uh, "What is Tubi?" Yeah, um, both very good points. So yeah, I guess uh, you know, I may as well uh, come out with it. I figured it would be kind of fun to watch a movie based off of some dumb creepypasta monster because I have a weird love-hate relationship with internet creepypastas, which oh. I guess maybe we should go over what that is for people who don't know. Surely yeah. there, surely um. there are a few, yeah. I'm trying to think of like what are, what are what are the comparisons to real life stuff we have? It's kind of like a scary meme, you know, a scary fad, just uh, stories that circulate, you know, like campfire tales, except on the internet, right? Yeah, basically, it's stories that are usually written with the intent of being a true life encounter with some sort of like supernatural being, and often there are like recurring characters like uh, this creature called the rake which huh. i guess is named the rake because it has long claws i assumed that was yeah yeah i i thought that was more of like an archaic thing like what was it uh there's like an archaic word I, for it, uh, that, that like like roguish or something that like kind of i think that's used yeah um yeah. A rake is, uh, in, a, in, that, in that sense, a rake is a uh, like a roguish, devilish, kind of a, a man whore. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. We, we, you know. we have worse names for it now. But what I mean is like, you know, a cad, you know, a, yeah. uh, that kind of a thing. Which, like, I... Because you I, rake I, some in. Yeah, because I, I actually, and I kind of assumed that was what the name was based on, which kind of, like, I guess to me, because I, I haven't read a lot of stories with the rake in them, but... That's like suggested some interesting lore that the creature could have some like extra depth to it or like could signal to its origin, you know? But I guess it's just called the rake. I guess it's just called the rake because it has 
long claws like a rake. I called it the rake because it's got long rake-like claws. Yeah, that's... I gotta admit, that's pretty, uh... That's disappointing. Yeah. Jacob, I have to level with you. I, I think you may have just saved this whole podcast for me. <laughs> uh, oh, really? Uh, this, well, I, here's what I thought you were doing. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were choosing the worst movie you possibly could to punish me. <laughs> um, couldn't I be doing both? Well, here's the thing. It's actually not the worst movie I've seen. In fact, I don't think it's even in my bottom, like, 50. Because I, I have an incredibly high tolerance for bad horror films. But it is still, a, a, it's got some notably bad moments, I have to say. Oh, oh yeah. No, it's, uh, it's a stinker. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I could look, it's like Tubi has just like the weirdest selection of the most god-awful horror movies, which I think we're going to have to go back to at some point. Oh, absolutely. Well, for one thing, yeah. it's free, which is great. Speaking of which, this is a great moment to segue into explaining what the hell Tubi is. What uh, the hell is Tubi, Jacob? Uh, it's like Netflix, but you have to pay for it. And it has commercials. Yeah, it's it's free Netflix. It's, 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 it's owned by Fox now. And you get to watch stuff, but it's filled with ads. But mm -hmm. at least they're not annoying ads. Like, the, the service doesn't seem to punish you relentlessly for not paying money. Which is nice. No, it is. It's almost too good to be true until you actually watch one of these movies and then realize how bad they are. And then you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's that's the catch. This is a relatively new company. I actually looked it up a little bit. It's actually based out of San Francisco. So it's hmm. like right next door. For you, I mean. Uh, yeah. yeah. Interesting. I and and uh, the CFO, they have like two guys there's like a masood guy who owns it and then the another guy named mahmoud who's up in the high thing and then there's like yeah i think the CF, cfo is just some guy named like robert or something anyway so fox bought it just recently and it's actually picking up subscribers the last time i heard i think it has like 30 million people or 32 million people watching regularly i could believe it yeah and it's, uh, it's been released in Australia recently, and uh, it's been re-released in the UK. Apparently it was taken down for some kind of law, and then it was put back up. So anyway, if anyone's listening in any of those places, or even other parts of the world, you might actually be able to use this uh, crummy little service. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a nice service, it's just full of really bad movies. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't blame them for that. I mean, you gotta take what you can get. And also, oh, yeah. I mean, I don't want you to besmirch some of this. I was scrolling down. I made a little mission for myself when I got to the horror section. I'm just like, right. I'm just going to scroll down until I find the raking. I'm sure it'll be right near the top, right? And no, it wasn't. Uh, um, nope. I never even found it scrolling down. I had to do a separate internet search to just go right to it as a link. <laughs> <laughs> but in hey. the meantime, I did find Warlock 1, 2, and 3. That's true. I love all of those. Yeah. Uh, I found Candyman. Pumpkinhead? There's some stuff in there. Yeah, no, 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 I know, but it's also just, like, full of stuff like, let's see, Killbillies, Chupacabra <laughs> Territory, Yeah. The 13th Unit, Lake Fear 3. Lake Fear 3, wow. Yeah. Uh, ooh, the third name. Yeah. Oh, is that the thirteen? Is that the Glass House one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. With Tony Shalhoub? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I like that one. It's not a scary film, but it, yeah, it's more of a spectacle. It, it's a good family film. I don't know how to describe it. It's like that Disney Haunted Mansion movie or something, you know? Yeah, I mean, considerably more violent, but yes. Yeah. No, yeah, I, 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 mean, I, I, have, I, I have fond memories of it. <laughs> It's one of those, like, I appreciate that they put thought into the lore of all the different ghosts. Yeah, they each have like, their thing. It's some, someone on some level cared, and uh, I think it shows. 
Yeah, you know, my stepdad actually saw the original 13 Ghosts in theaters. It was its own movie, so the one you saw isn't even the original idea. <laughs> it's a remake. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the original, I don't think it's the same story. I'm sure it's something vaguely similar, but the idea is that it was one of those gimmick horror films, so you had to wear special glasses to see different ghosts, so when they got to the, that part of the movie, they would like put up some kind of a, an indication. You got like, you got to put on these glasses to see this ghost. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, that's kind of cool. And, and they do implement that a bit into the into the movie, like the story of the, the remake. Yeah. I forget why, but they have to put on ghost glasses. Yeah. So, I, don't know, I thought that was cute. <laughs> It'd be great in the movie. They're like ghost glasses. Why? Why are these ghost glasses? Is it for the ghosts? They're like, no, they're just regular glasses, but they're haunted. <laughs> like what? <All> right. <laughs> okay, so as we said before, we're doing the raking, a movie I've never heard of. It, it only just came out in 2017. Uh, this is only like the third or fourth thing that this director has ever done. So, Jacob. Would you recommend this film? I mean, just generally speaking. Uh, no, not not particularly. I mean, <laughs> if you're like, okay, look, I think there's what is it? There's like, there's at least one more rake movie on Tubi. I have to imagine there's at least one more. Oh, uh, so you if you're like, knowing that there was multiple rake things, maybe we should have done like the whole trifecta. I was just like, I'll watch all the rake movies and just review them at once. Oh yeah, God, that's that's a that's a good idea in hindsight, but no, no, I don't know. Yeah, in theory, maybe yeah. not in practice. Yeah, yeah, because I, I did actually. <laughs> it would probably be so incoherent. Oh, oh yeah, it would be it'd be incoherent. And then I, I did watch a bit of the uh, the other rake movie, and uh, it's not much better. No, oh. this one at least I feel like is more comment on a bull. Yeah, uh, yeah. I also would not recommend this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, well, I, I would say yeah. I, I guess I would say unless you're like, maybe you'd get something out of this if you're a fan of the rake. Although I feel like if you're a fan of the rake, you will also be slightly annoyed at the uh, lore choices this movie makes. It makes uh, choices that aren't in the original thing? Uh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely... As far as I know, the rake isn't repelled by light. If anything, I think it's supposed to be a oh, spoiler alert. Oh, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, guys. Yeah, the, the creature is repelled by light. Yeah. There you go. Well, okay, that actually gets us to our tagline for this movie, which this does have. Uh, uh, yeah. Speaking of which, when you when you look at the cover of this movie poster or whatever this is, you know, direct to DVD release. Uh -huh. Wait, would it have been in 2017? Well, whatever this is, promo release. It looks like a gray space alien. Yes. Like reaching towards the camera or whatever. And the tagline is "Stay in the light." You know, like just just to make sure that there's no ambiguity about what's going on or what its weakness is. <laughs> okay, as long as we're talking tagline, I also I have the uh, the Tubi page up with the uh, the brief description of the movie. Uh, oh, all right. Please. Okay. It's a deadly and major fail when a group of college students take a research trip for a class project to a wooded <laughs> area haunted by an urban legend. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jesus. Yeah. I read a description where they were described as anthropology students, and I was just like, man, I, I can't imagine anthropology students being this stupid. Oh, holy shit. This is the... Uh, hold on. This director did Infection. Brian Brewer? The Invasion the myth, Begins. The legend? Was, yeah. Yeah. Which, I have not seen that movie, but I have seen that cover in movie rental stores quite a bit. Yeah, it's so. like the moaning face with the worms coming out of the mouth and like the white, we call it, eye, eye pupils. Yes, yeah. The, yeah, the eye pupils. Yeah, and then <laughs> The Wake. I didn't say that right, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. And then The Wake, which as a 
just very angry looking child on it. I haven't seen that one, but uh, I don't know. Maybe one day. There's something about being a horror fan. I think the, the heart of a horror fan is that of an optimist. Like scavengers, we weed around in dubious films, hoping against hope for a good monster, some good kills, a genuinely spooky scene. I don't feel as though we need an entirely perfect movie. I think you can pick through, you know, like, like, a, like a crappy broth. You can pick out the good bits of carrot and the good bits of meat and just eat it. <laughs> and I think there is some of that in this movie. So I would not say that it is a complete waste of a film. <laughs> but I think the most notable thing about this movie is the director. This is an act of will that this movie exists. <laughs> yeah, actually. And when you look at this guy's credits, he wrote, produced, directed, edited, executive produced, and starred in this movie. Uh, it's a work of love, and it shows in every scene. Yes, exactly. So, you know, as we get into it, if it seems like one of the characters is a little too old and is acting really woodenly, uh, you can think to yourself, oh, that's the director. Uh. <laughs> Nevertheless, I mean, I, I got to give this guy props. I mean, think of how many bad projects never saw the light of day. This man clawed this thing, raked it, if you will, into existence. He did it. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah, he, I would definitely say that he uh, managed to uh, inflict this movie on a lot of innocent people who didn't deserve it. <laughs> yeah. So without further ado, I, I say we start getting into it, right? Uh, yeah, I feel like kind of have to at this point. Yeah, so right off the bat, you know very little money was spent here. <laughs> there's like a, There's a harsh edit, and there's no fade, and it just goes to a car driving down a road at night. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but the very brief title cards at the beginning, or whatever you want to call them, the, the credits, are for brain damage films. And uh, they are an infamous company for just uh, taking whatever and just releasing it on the public at large. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so someone is, someone is filming, I don't know, maybe the entire film with a handheld camera, or dare I say it, a smartphone? Because I see the car slipping out of focus, like, right in the beginning, like, in the dark. It's something that iPhones do when you're trying to film something at night, and it's too dark. And it'll start, like, wobbling in and out of focus, like, when it's trying to figure out what's going on. I was under the impression that, yeah, this is a, a smartphone movie. I hope so. I mean, I would give the movie more credit if that was the case. I, to be honest, yeah. <laughs> to if be. this was, like, a 48 hours film festival type, you know, like, we gotta film this right now. This would be like, you know, the Mona Lisa of that. Yeah. But if any time at all was spent making this movie, you know, more, maybe more of a finger waggle. Yeah, I guess, I don't know, like, I, I do kind of want to, part of me wants to give this movie the benefit of that and say like, hey, you, uh, you had a limited amount of time and you got it out and uh, that's something. But who knows, you yeah. know. Inside of this car driving at night is an angry couple this is a, a tried and true pillar of horror film victimhood. Many an angry marriage or disgruntled relationship was prematurely ended by the night road incursion of your chupacabras, <laughs> your mutant giant animals, your cursed child spirits. And now the rake. <laughs> yeah. What I like, there's like a strange, I don't know how to describe it. There's like, there's a, a cynical jaded feel to the film where they're just like well this is what you do so i guess we're gonna do it we're not gonna enjoy that we're doing it but we're gonna do it yeah this <laughs> it's really interesting because yeah there there aren't a whole lot of surprises in this movie there are some i would say at the end or at least i would argue i, I can't not yeah all are good <laughs> no in fact there, there's one in particular i'm i'm looking forward to but uh but there is a a large portion of this movie that's sort of, well, in a horror movie, you do this, right? Yeah, well, it starts very much like that, and I was miserable for the first half of this movie because I thought it would all be that way. Because there are some movies that really are like that, where characters never develop, and they are unpleasant to one another and to the camera, and then they die. 
I hate those movies. Those are some of the ones I, I rate the lowest, you know, where there just doesn't seem to be any creative spark. You know, it's just a miserable slog. <laughs> yeah. This movie starts that way. So that's what I would argue. I actually read one or two reviews of the handfuls of people who saw this film. And some people were like, oh, I love that beginning scene. That was, you know, it was badass or whatever. This part at the beginning almost drove me out of the movie. You know, like I'm not a, a walk out of the movie theater kind of guy, but there are certain lines that I really don't like people crossing, especially right away. And, and, and this movie had one of them for me. Wait, wait what, is, what was it in particular? Oh, the possible murdering of a child? Oh, I mean, like... Well, uh, he doesn't die, but, <laughs> you know... I guess it's the way that it's done. Because, you know, I'll just describe the scene briefly, because that's all it requires, and that's all it deserves. Okay. So there, <laughs> there are these, there's these two cardboard cutout character parents. They're fighting about something... I don't remember exactly what. The dad refuses to get directions. Oh, that's why. They, they were fighting about him not stopping the car. Yeah. He, he was so determined to not stop the car that he had a big angry fight. And then he ran out of gas as if he had never looked at the gas gauge for however long, you know, like hours. Mm. You think at some point you'd be like, oh, that's getting a little low here. I mean, we're out in the Mojave Desert, you know, for God's sakes. We could have died. Or... Perhaps the rake used its powers to make the car run out of gas. Yeah, as the rake makes a lot of other things not work throughout this film. <laughs> I don't know. That could be. That's probably not. That's probably not it. Yeah, but anyway, the dad gets out of the car to investigate a noise. He gets dragged off. There's a, a puddle of blood. Uh, okay. The mom gets out. She looks around. Like her eyes don't follow the blood. Which is weird, because that's where the monster would be, and that's also where her husband would be. But she's just kind of looking all over the place. Yeah. And then she hears and then she hears a noise, and forgets how to open a car door, and then the monster comes up and kills her, and puts her on the roof. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess part of what, like, offends me is that it's... The boy in the back seat, you don't even know he's there at first. You know, as soon as I saw him, I was just like, oh, Christ, you brought a kid? <laughs> and it's his birthday. It's like, they, it's like they want maximum trauma. So this kid watches his dad die in front of him. And then he watches his mom die. And then her, her corpse is draped over the windshield and just slides forward slowly. And he's just moaning in there pathetically, like strapped in his car seat. He can't get out. And then the... The monster like is about to kill him, but apparently the the light from the car door makes him go away, mm -hmm. and then someone rescues him. I don't know. Maybe it's just because like I I, I don't know. The, the kid's performance isn't super great, but I found it real plausible. I don't know. It struck a chord with me, and it's to me it's like starting a movie, kicking a dog or something. You know what I mean? Like it just put a real <laughs> foul taste in the mouth. Or just well, like yeah, you like this? Ha ha. Okay. Well, I will say this. I, Jesus. I think it's it's funny because I don't think the kid is an especially good actor, but I do think you could argue that he is the best actor in that scene. Yes, I would absolutely <laughs> argue that. Uh, because he does sound genuinely upset. That being said, yeah. uh, I am of the opinion that, if anything, horror movies should have more dead kids in them. I don't know. I guess part of it is context. You know, I hate having to go along with your horrible idea but, or concept of child murder. But what I mean is like, there's a cinematic language to the acceptability of, of homicide in a horror film. I mean, the parents, they did it too much. They made them really stupid and really unlikable. And they're like, all right, it doesn't matter if they die. But the kid is innocent. He does nothing wrong. He doesn't you know, whine or complain. You don't give the audience a reason to be like, ha, yeah, wouldn't that be weird if he died? Ugh. You know, like there's none of that. So I don't know. I was just like relating to the kid. I'm just like, oh God, no, don't do it. Why would you do this? And it's like the start of your movie. So like, you don't even know what this is yet. And it just goes right to child murder. Sure. I guess I can, I guess I can see what you mean. But I mean, it would have been pretty cool. All right. <laughs> Let's put that in your list. Yeah. Jacob likes child murder. No, look, I, I'm just saying. Line. 
And no, I just like I appreciate when a movie can like go there with that kind of thing because kids usually are off limits with that when in horror movies. You uh, you don't yeah. kill kids, so like I mean, and ultimately they didn't. That's true. So mark against this one. You ever see uh, Alien vs. Predator Requiem? I saw it in theaters with somebody. I don't remember if it was you or who. I don't know if anyone's ever truly seen that movie because of the bad lighting. Yeah, oh man. I, <laughs> that is the movie I wish I had walked out on. That, that, and that one does the double, the double whammy of bad moves because they have a kid and a dog get killed by aliens right in the first, I forget how long, it's like the first half hour, I think. I don't know if you remember that. I don't, I, they're like three moments, I mean, it's not even scenes, it's like moments within the movie that I remember, and yeah, then that's and about it. The Predalien also puts eggs into a, a pregnant woman's stomach, I guess, to be upsetting. I don't know. Yeah, like, I remember that. gross for gross sake. And, uh, yeah. So anyway, and, yeah. Left a bad taste in my mouth, yeah. Yeah, well, no, okay, like, I guess, like, now that I'm, like, thinking about kids dying, it, I guess if it's, like, a really funny way. Yeah, like Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah, yes, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. But, like, not if it's, like, too mean-spirited. Yeah. Oh, yeah, also, it's the kid's birthday. It's oh, his yeah. birthday, Jacob! Oh, yeah, that's true, Yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, that would, that would suck, like, having your birthday ruined like that. The rake should have come in real close and just been like, you're gonna remember this forever, little kid. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't know what you want me to say. It sucks to be him. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I skipped over uh, so much notes. I, I wrote way more than I actually wanted to t actually speak about this scene. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, that was the cold open. Yeah. So, you know, that just gets you primed for the film. You're like, yeah! Kid mm. watched his parents die. Let's get into this! Mmm! And uh, it goes into a title card. It says, Lesson 1 Entertainment Presents. It's a shame it's only the first lesson. So it's <sighs> six minutes into the film, and I'm already regretting it. I actually wrote it down as a marker for myself. I was just like, all right, here we go. <laughs> 140 minutes, and... This was only six of them. It says it's a Brian Brewer film. Never in the history of films has a film been more Brian Brewer. <laughs> or any one man, I suppose. <laughs> and we have some grainy photographs and a weird sort of MIDI tune uh, as the theme song. Yeah, and then By some... Like, like... Like... Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was also going to say, and then there are some... Uh... Classic creepypasta images of the rake interspersed. Is that what those are? Yeah, yeah. So that's just that, that, that he just lifted those from the internet. Uh, a good deal, but yes. Oh my god! See, I thought those looked great, and I thought he made those, and I'm just like, why did he put all this effort into the montage and not into the opening scene? <laughs> and now I can't even give this. I can't give him credit for this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sorry, man. Oh, God. All right. For those curious, the theme song is done by Churchill Score and Sound. There's some bloody body pictures. Oh, yeah, here's why I start writing. Uh, yeah, this man wrote, directed, edited this movie because, you know, his credits just keep popping up over and over again. Right. <laughs> I wonder if he also did the catering. They're like, yeah, I bought hot dogs. And then it, the montage ends with the sun setting. And I just wrote... The sun sets on the opening credits montage, and on my heart. <laughs> but in a way, it's the beginning of something beautiful. Yeah, you know what? You can't have a rebirth sometimes until you die. You gotta yeah. die a little inside. And, you know, in this case, uh, what we're treated to is... Uh, I, I assume it's the director and his badass yes. dragon tattoo on his back. Yeah, so there's very brief stock footage establishing a shot of a college campus. And yeah. then it just cuts to two young folks making out. Well, one isn't so young. <laughs> the guy looks 40. 
Yeah. And yes, this is our director. He plays Ethan Cooper, although most of the students in the film call him Mr. Cooper, including the girl he's currently having sex with in this scene. <laughs> Uh, so yeah so he says maybe we shouldn't and then he's just like yeah okay i guess this is the beginning of their awkward relationship yeah well i mean it's like to show you something like entirely bad you know guy he got had to like get talked into it a little yeah i guess like she had to like say like we should do it and then there was there was some hesitation there I don't know. I, 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 no, no, not really. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I will say a lot of this movie makes more sense when you realize that's the director. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, which I didn't. I didn't realize when I uh, when I watched the movie. Yeah. So she, the girl, asks if she got the A or something to that effect. He jokingly says that she did a B performance, and, uh, and then she hits him. <laughs> which is fun. There's generic rock playing on something. It might be a radio, but we never see it. The shirtless dude, who we know to be the director, he just reaches off screen and then the music ends, <laughs> which I love. is like a cheap movie thing, like you couldn't even get a prop for a radio. Well, it's the, uh, the backup smartphone that they were using. Yeah, well, I mean, it wasn't really playing, I suppose. I mean, for one thing, it's rock music, and then when he turns it off, she says, Ugh, finally... Yeah. And, you know, he says, well, you could have given it a chance. And she's like, I'll give country music a chance if you let me get out of doing the lame finals project. <laughs> so I guess oh, that's I think true. it's supposed yeah. to be some honky tonk country, but it's not. Yeah. It's not country that's playing. They couldn't even get a country song. No. Oh, God. They should have just gotten something public domain, you know, like from some folk music from like 50 or something years ago. There's some dead guy. Yeah. She strokes a weird, horrible scar that's somewhere on his body. I think later on they establish that it's supposed to be on his shoulder, but they don't show it. It's just like a, a super tight close-up on a weird series of cuts. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently tomorrow is his birthday. So she offers him a birthday present for his birthday tomorrow, but she won't let him open it. Why would you do that? Yeah, it's kind of messed up, to be honest. <laughs> She's just like, Here's the thing. No, you can't open it. Well, I just, I don't know. I, I, I think she wanted him to want to open it just so that she could tell him that he couldn't. Yeah. Which, I again, is weird. You know, if this is one of the early moments in their relationship, it's, it's odd to have this kind of a dynamic going on right off the bat. So a girl with fun hair, as I wrote it, <laughs> knocks on the door. There's a pretty cool whiplash effect of the camera as the two lovers jump up out of bed. Yeah, credit where credit is due, I, I guess. Yeah, the... Yeah, you know, the camera moves. That's something. <laughs> well, no, I mean, you know, I think it's a, it's a smartphone or something, or maybe a handheld camera, because they just do, a, like, a fluid upward movement. I don't know, maybe you don't remember it, but, like, yeah, it, it looked kind of cool. I don't think it was on purpose. I think it was unintentionally cool. Okay, I uh, that doesn't... I don't remember that. Although I do remember that... Right. that the woman who comes in, I, like, my first thought was, do people still dress like that? Um, I like, don't know. Like, the, the, like, <laughs> to be honest. Well, with, like, the, like, arm legging things. It, it, it feels very much like, yeah, maybe if, like, this was back when I was in high school or something. Yeah, she dresses the way the girl dresses in... What was that show with the hacker goth girl? Was it JAG or, or NCIS or something? Uh, NCIS. Uh, yes. Also, her, also She's her on the is... cover of the DVDs as if, like, uh, you go first. Yeah, okay. Well, let's make it clear first of all. Her name is Abby. Okay. Just, yeah. <laughs> I just remember that on the DVDs for that show, they just have her on the cover of all of them because they're like, we know this is why you're watching this. <laughs> I see. The thing is, like, I, I can't even say that's a lie because it was like, yeah, I guess I'm gonna watch this. One hundred percent. That's why. Yeah. 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 And that girl never seemed like a real person either. She was more of like a creation for the show, you know. I mean, yeah, that's how characters are. 
I don't so know, anyway, I don't know yet. I don't know what you want me to say to that. There's no response for that. <laughs> no response needed, Jacob. <laughs> All right. So yeah, it's the roommate. That's yeah. what she is. She needs her charger. Also, it's her room, so just you should just let her in. I mean, like she leaves her locked out for a long time. Mm-hmm. What's his face? The teacher's assistant. We find out later the director sneaks out the window and the girl gussies up and cleans up the room and tries to disguise the fact that a man was just in there. And it takes what seems like five minutes before she lets her roommate in. Yeah. This is I was like, on the roommate's yeah. side. I was just, it's just oh, a yeah. move, you know? Yeah, yeah. No. I mean, this is part of what you were saying. In the first half of the movie, and they don't even really get better in the second half, these people are all awful to each other. Absolutely. Uh, it's very off-putting to sit through. <laughs> Especially the way they yeah. treat, uh, I can't remember his name, the guy with the glasses who, like, I guess he's introduced in the upcoming scene, who, like, seems like a nice enough guy. No, I, I disagree. Really? Yeah, he's a creep. Yeah, uh, his, his name is Noah. Well, I don't think he means to be. Well, I don't know if any creep means to be a creep. They just are. <laughs> I guess, but, like, I don't know. I'm just saying. It's uh, the difference between being, like, willfully awful and... Uh, Unintentionally so? Yeah, just kind of being a weird dude. So the girl has a t-shirt that just says zombies on it, which I just thought was fun. Like, you can't commit to, like, a movie or something. You're like, yeah, just say zombies. <laughs> you know, everybody likes zombies. Yeah. And, you know, not to be rude, but the goth girl looks like she's 40. Uh, okay, well, I'm glad... Okay, glad you were the one to say it first, because I didn't want to be mean. I Well, yeah, see, no, I hesitated, because I, I feel bad. I, I, I don't want to be that guy that has to be all ageist about stuff. Uh, well, but, yeah, I was... mean, but it's... It's undeniable. <laughs> No, it is. She's, uh, to be clear, I'm not saying that she's, like, unattractive or anything, and you can also go into college, whatever age you feel like. Yeah. It just feels a little odd. It stands the, out. The lady, yeah, she, so what the hell is her name? I think her name is Ali Rivera. Yeah, she plays Jade, and she's 37 now, so... This was made in 2017, so she probably would have been her mid-30s. I think there's something about the way she's filmed, or maybe the makeup she has on, it actually makes her look older than she is. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I mean, she looks... I, I, I would say she looks older than her 30s. Not by a lot, yeah. but yeah. I don't know. Well, she has kind of a bony frame, and so I wonder if that just makes her seem, you know, more... Old lady ish. Uh, I, I, okay, I like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, maybe we shouldn't, like, pick her apart too much. But yeah, that's all right. No. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Well, yeah, I was just going to say, though, that the, the dorms are required for freshman undergrads. They make you uh, stay in a dorm for a year so that you don't starve to death or die in a fire before you properly acclimate to living alone. But if you're of a certain age, they don't make you stay in a dorm. I, it's just It just strikes me as odd. They could have just had her be an older woman in college. You'd be like, just live in an apartment or something. You know, they don't need to be roommates. Maybe they were just trying to save money by having them in the same room at the same time. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, because the roommates together, they're also in the same class, and they're also in the same final, but oh. they hate each other. So, so I, well, it just seems like bad luck, you know, that you're apparently these two girls are trapped with one another, even though they openly despise each other in almost every scene. Yeah. I remember my time in Wendell Hill Hall B of Central Washington University. None of our rooms had working stoves, and if anyone on any of the floors tripped the fire alarm, the entire building had to be marched outside and, and wait. Mm. It was horrible. I once had the girl across the hall burn pancakes, and uh, everybody had to get brought out of the building. It was like three or 400 people. Jesus Christ. You know, it was actually pretty great, you know, because we knew her. So we're just like, it was her! We're like pointing at her. She's like, shut up! <laughs> I, see, that's the, like, I can't remember last time I burnt something, but that would make me so afraid yeah. to cook anything. Just on the off chance. 
the fire alarms tripped so often that after a while I didn't even leave when the fire alarm went off. I could have died <laughs> just because people are burning their pop tarts, letting their top ramen noodles on their, you know, their, their space heater things just slop over and catch flame. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if there's a transition really, but the two roommates go to a bar. Yeah. That's not much of one. Yeah. They're just there. The goth girl texts Noah to see if he's coming, and he's over at the door getting his ID checked by the bouncer, who is the best character in the movie. Oh, Jesus. Peter, no. I, I love this bouncer. <laughs> he's like this, he's this big muscly man with like a, a huge head, but he's got like a tiny, a tiny little fedora hat. And he only has, like, one line. He's just like, hey, pal, how you doing? Gonna need to see some ID. I don't know. I believe the performance. I love it. I guess. I will say he's not an especially muscly guy. He's just... Uh, I'm sorry, I believe Peter. his performance. I absolutely believe that a guy like that would wear a fedora. That doesn't make it all right. <laughs> all right. I mean, either way, you know. Yeah, no, I like him. Uh, he doesn't have a good place to sit. He's just on a stool in the middle of the bar, sort of perched. I mean, I guess some bars are like that because they, they need people to be intercepted right away and the architecture of a room doesn't always work right. I had, a working the I had a theory on that, actually. Oh. And that's that they're filming in a real bar and there's an actual place for the bouncer but they didn't use the real bouncer, they used an actor. So they had ah. to find another place within the bar that they could use for their fake bouncer while the actual bouncer is still doing his real bouncing. Oh, that's amazing. I, I hope that's true. That'd be great. I, yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I think may have happened. Maybe. Yeah. So it's the girl, the blonde girl's named Kennedy. I don't remember when they actually start saying her name, but that is her name. So there's okay. Kennedy, and Jade is the, the goth girl, yeah. and then there's the nerdy boy, Noah, who shows up, very awkward, and then okay. Mr. Cooper shows up, he's the teacher's assistant, yeah, or TA. The girls don't like each other, and neither girl likes Noah, and that's the dynamic. Yeah, no, it's, we're off to a great start. <laughs> yeah, we're off to the races. Yeah. I have to say, especially early on, this bar scene is about as awkward as real college meetings are when no one wants to be there. Yeah, I will say, in a weird way, this captures a realism better than like a higher budget movie probably would. It feels like after the money has run out on the production, nobody wants to be there. And they're just filming them being like, just miserable. <laughs> Yeah, just wanting to leave, just and like, you know, honestly, people are like that in college sometimes. So it's not actually an inauthentic feeling. I just think it might it might have been accidentally achieved. Yeah, I mean, there's also stuff like the bartender spending like way too much time hitting on Jade in this kind of like protracted yes. scene where it's like, this is like everything bounces back and forth here. It's just terrible. It's a shame because it actually is a, it's a good, ah, I'm saying it wrong. It is a good dynamic early on, but it gets weird because it's not cut. I think it's almost every take. So they say a few sort of almost charming things, but then the scenes go on for too long. She says, oh, I need something, something strong. And he's like, oh, it's that bad, huh? And she's like, yeah, it's really bad. I'm in a really bad movie right now. Could you get me some booze? <laughs> <laughs> And Noah shows up, and he says the worst thing ever. He's like, hey, um, I'm not really into drinking a whole lot, so like, why don't we order two different things, and then we can share out of each other's glasses. And <laughs> I, I don't know what, what he thought. I don't I was I, thinking I, like, you know. I was thinking like those 1950s things where like he drinks shakes out of straws and cups. Like, Is that what he thinks beer is like? Uh, I don't know. I, all I can say is, uh, look, I, I, I feel for that poor man. Yeah, he's just I wrettedly mean, awkward. Yeah, I don't, like, like I said, like, I really, he's like a bad guy. He's just really awkward. And that's terrible for everyone else to have to deal with. We could just drink out of either side of the glass, you know? 
Oh, I'm just like, there's like a certain like naivety, like to like everything he does. That's sort of like, this is really like sad. More like more than creepy. It's just kind of like, I don't know. He's just kind of like an awkward guy. So, you know, they keep cutting to the bartender and it cuts for too long and it just shows him like being real uncomfortable. And yeah. you know, bartenders, bartenders are paid and trained to supply booze. So he actually goes against his job by being like, I don't know if I want to deal with this awkwardness. I'm just going to stand over here until Noah leaves. He should have said something charming and then encouraged them both to get drinks, you know, like with like a little wink. Yeah, hey, man, you're just trying things out, you know, just. Just try this, but don't drink out of her glass, you weird creep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, let me just take you aside and tell you the business. He could have just bought multiple drinks like that. I mean, like, it doesn't matter to him if he's, like, taking Noah for a ride. Well, I don't know. You could both buy your own drinks, and then you could just describe what it tastes like to the other person, and, you know, then it's not nearly as weird. <laughs> anyway, Jade tells Noah to leave, basically. She's just like, hey, uh, you should go check up on the, the rest of the group. She doesn't give him a reason why. You know, there's no point to it, but he's just like, oh, okay. And he just kind of sadly walks back. Finally, finally, the bartender says some more stuff to Jade. I guess they hit on each other for a while longer, and he makes her a rather elaborate looking drink that's probably just kind of cranberry juice with like a, an umbrella in it and like a martini glass or something. Yeah. Actually, wait, it might be a margarita glass. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it was a margarita glass. But, uh... I don't know. I'm not a booze guy either, right? But unlike Noah, I'm not weird about it. Well, I mean, I should, I should know a little bit more about this. I guess my, uh, my sister's a bartender, so... Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Anyway. The bartender says he likes onions because they have layers, and that he likes to peel the layers, which is like... Ugh. Yeah, that should have immediately shut that conversation down. Yeah, she should have just shot him like a horrified look, and she'd be like, <laughs> okay, that's... I thought you were cool, but that's pretty weird. <laughs> yeah. This is a bad movie, so she's like, oh, I like this, this weird thing you've just said, and now I'm going to go sit down and think about it. Yeah, it makes, it's, like, kind of deep. Yeah. I mean, if you really yeah, think yeah, about it. Because, like, people have layers. He thinks I'm, I'm like Shrek, you know, because I've got layers. <laughs> oh, my God, I didn't even think about that. Or a kid. Oh, man, that makes, that makes it so much worse. <laughs> oh, that should have been the line. He's like, yeah, the... you're like Shrek to me. You've got layers. Oh man, that one might work. I like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would like that line. I mean, he'd win me over. Yeah, yeah. Jade, the goth girl, and the bartender flirt a little. As I said, the guy says he likes onions because they're like layers. And uh, I almost buy the chemistry, but more importantly, I'm just relieved to have a moment in the film when the characters in a scene aren't actively hating one another. <laughs> so there is that. Just yeah. to put a cherry on that scene. As soon as Jade walks back, Blondie chimes in. That was disgusting. People like you should not be breeders. <laughs> like, what what are these lines? Yeah, well, also, what do you mean thing to say to someone? Unbelievably cruel. Like, for basically no reason either. I don't know. I, uh, I don't get it. I, yeah, so what was she horrified about? That she likes a guy? I mean, I, mean, I guess, I guess she would... I guess she was, like, really turned off by that onion line. That's the best I can tell. Maybe she heard all of that. In which case, yeah, no, I'm on <laughs> Kennedy's side if that's the case. If she heard it, she's like, he said that onion thing, and then you were into it? Ugh. Yeah. Shame. Shame on you. That is a funnier reading of that scene. I like that. So Noah, he's the only one that took notes for this... Uh, class they're supposed to be taking i mean like i said in the description of this movie it says anthropology i don't know what it's supposed to be no one else seems to care at one point jade says that she's an a student and she takes all of this very seriously it doesn't really seem to be in the, the case in the movie and her knowing things accomplishes nothing for her yeah things like that don't, don't have to matter i just thought it was odd that they pointed out you know they kind of go out of their way to be like i'm an a student 
that means I'm diligent and studious and I pay attention to things. And then it avails her not at all. Yeah, this movie loves setup. Yeah. Not not really like paying it off, but like love setup. Yeah. I just realized the cold open scene is also just a huge setup to something that doesn't really pay off at the end. No. Spoiler for that, I guess. I mean, whatever. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean... Who cares? This movie's terrible. Well, okay, like, I'm, <laughs> I, like, I'm sorry. I, like, I'm going to address the, the listener or listeners that directly. Okay. If you don't see where that beginning scene is going, is this your, your first movie? Come on. Like it's up, it's a right? movie, certainly. Well, sure, but I mean, come on. We know we've seen movies. We know where it's going. Okay, so their their final project for whatever this class is is to investigate an urban legend out in the field, mm-hmm. and they have like a like a portfolio book. So there's possible choices. I wish there was more of this because I just want to see all of the things they didn't investigate. I want to see like a, like a like a Mothman. And like a Sasquatch, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, they do mention one or two other names, which I think one of them is a creepypasta monster they didn't use for this. Yeah, they mention someone named Chard Man. Who yeah. Who walks, walks out of the bushes and stares at you, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm like pretty sure that's a creepypasta monster. But I don't know. Yeah, well. Well, as I said, I watched this whole movie not knowing anything about the creepypasta element, so I just thought this was just some random thing. I almost mm-hmm. thought Charred Man would show up at the end and save them from the rake. Oh, man. If only. <laughs> yeah, oh, Jesus. That would be great. Fight. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Already a no, much no. better ending. No, yeah, you're onto something here with the, like, Creepypasta monster versus creepypasta monster thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just get like, their territories to overlap so that they all like meet in the same place. Yeah, like the rake versus the slender man. Yeah. They I also did... mentioned flying uh, pixies. So that's something that's around here. Sure, why not? This is all filmed in uh, Joshua Tree, California. So I guess this is a real place. I thought it was Arizona. That's what it looks like. But there are parts of California that are this flat, desolate, and hot. Uh, yeah. So they mentioned that the rake is in Joshua Tree. I actually thought they meant literally a Joshua Tree. That's a kind of... Is it a cactus, I think? I'm not sure. I know the name, but... Uh... I think it's a cactus, or maybe it's a weird little tree. But whichever one it is, it's an endangered species of plant, and so it's actually protected. And you get in trouble if you damage them or run them over. Uh, it looks like a tree mixed with a cactus. So, there you go. <laughs> Whichever. Yeah. The point is, I thought that when they were mentioning Joshua Tree, I thought that he emerged out of a Joshua Tree because he was like, you know, one of those nature spirits where, like, if you if you hurt too many of them, he's going to come out and kill you. Peter, that's a little too interesting for this movie. Well, see, no, okay... My idea isn't good, but it is still better than what is presented here. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. To be, yeah, to be clear, that's that's all I'm suggesting. Yeah, no, I mean, at least it would be about something rather than nothing, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. The rake only appears on the equinox, which is twice a year. I looked it up. It's roughly between, it's roughly around March 20th and September 23rd. But it changes depending on which hemisphere you're in and, uh, you know, which one it is. Apparently, the Gregorian calendar cycles every 400 years. So it's not accurate all the time. It keeps changing. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's notable about it is that it's the day in which day and night are equal length. But it's only within one minute of one another. So it's not a super, super accurate thing. It's also weird because as we find out later in the film... This thing is light sensitive. So why why would it go to a time when it has such a short night? It's not the shortest night of the year, but it's the it's the middle time. Why not spend the time killing people on the shortest day of the year? Well, that would require digging into the lore of the rake or 
uh, really, really doing anything with the rake. <laughs> and this movie really isn't interested in that. I was thinking the rake should go up to Barrow, Alaska and just like 30 days of night it. I mean, he could be killing people all month long in total darkness. That'd be an interesting movie. Too bad they didn't do that. They should just insert his character into 30 Days of Night just so he can be killed by those vampires. I mean, he basically is, though. Is he? I don't I, know what he's supposed to be. I mean, he he is basically a vampire in this. He just doesn't do any of the, like, cool vampire stuff. Well, he eats human flesh and he tears at people. I'm trying to think if there's more. I, that might be it. I mean, like, he doesn't really do anything. He kind of seems to appear sometimes. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, he looks a mythical pu- creature. He's got a, he's got a surprising lack of interesting powers or abilities. Not much going on with him. I mean, even when he, I mean, I guess like not to spoil it, but like even his design is pretty uninspired. I've seen worse. I mean, for a rubber suit, it's not terrible. Well, yeah, we'll get it. No, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so. Some girl named Kelly just walks up and leers at the papers. And, you know, they don't explain to you who this person is right away. So you're just like, what, what, what is this girl? This is weird and rude. Also, the, the camera slips out of focus. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking, what was everything for this movie done in one take? Or were there even worse takes than these? I dare to dream of a world where there were worse takes. And these were all the yeah. best. Nine takes and this is the best one. <laughs> so they established that Kelly is Jade's sister, I guess. Mm-hmm. No one makes the connection that Kelly and Jade are both shades of green. So personally, I had no idea that Kelly is a shade of green. Apparently it's kind of a, a yellowish green. It's kind of like uh, the color of shamrocks on St. Paddy's Day, that kind of thing. Uh-huh. I never would have guessed. I don't know why no one knew this. I guess just because, you know, he read the script. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, I don't remember in the movie, but how young is she supposed to be? Because I that get the Im- question. Because I get the impression that she's supposed to be rather significantly younger, but yes. her actress doesn't seem like she's she's not a younger actress in comparison to like everyone else. You know what I mean? It's not like. You, I don't get the impression that yeah, she's supposed know. to be, like, like 16 or something. I think she's supposed to be something like that. Personally, I thought she was closer to maybe 18. Because later on, they give her a beer, and no one's, like, freaking out. And that leads me to believe that she's had them before. And, you know, it, it's maybe a little wrong, but, like, yeah, whatever. She's about right. So I think she's yeah. right on the doorstep of independence. Uh, yeah, I guess. It, it's just kind of weird, because, like, she plays the character a little, like naive yeah. too in a way that it's just like what what is this <laughs> well she's actually i guess after the bouncer she's like my second favorite character she's one of the only nice people in the movie yeah well you see where that gets her <laughs> <laughs> I, I think i might leave that whole dramatic pause that was great <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> Kelly says that their parents only eat green M&M's, which is really weird. Yeah. What the hell was that about? I don't know. Just because they're both named green things, and so I guess their parents are really obsessed. Yeah, I mean, that makes them sound psychotic. Absolutely bonkers. Green isn't even the best color. Oh, green's my favorite color. Alright, well, we're not getting into that. I mean, not that it matters or anything. I really like a dark forest green, you know, like they used to have in Crayola crayons. Like that real oh, like, sure. rich, almost black, kind of like mossy black green. Mm-hmm. That's my fave. So who was it? I think it's Kennedy or, or maybe it's Noah. Anyway, one of them asks, well, how'd you even get in here? And she just turns and points at the bouncer and, and he waves at her. So, I mean, like, cool, but that's also pretty illegal. And you get in serious trouble if you got caught, you know, letting someone in. Yeah, between that and the bartender, I just think that's maybe just kind of a shitty bar. So Jade leads Kelly into the ladies' room. Kelly explains that she took a bus to visit Jade. She's miserable at home and wants to hang? Question mark? Yeah. She's just kind of like, hey, I, I just felt like showing up, and so here I am. 
You just walked into a bar at night. I knew you were here somehow. <laughs> and I want in on your final project. You know, honestly, yet more evidence that uh, their parents are just nuts. Yeah, probably. For me, it gives Kelly credit. I feel like she had to do some deduction to be able to find her way to Jade at the bar. Yeah, I also just feel like if you would rather hang out and do a college assignment with someone, whatever you were doing before must have been real boring. Yeah, I mean, I, I suspect that their parents are real dysfunctional to the point where they're driving all of their daughters away. Yeah. Kelly begs to tag along on the field trip to investigate a mythical monster. What what class is this? What what? How is this a final? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this is like... What do they hope to achieve? I don't understand. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that. Like in the best case scenario, you know? Where they just don't find anything. I think what... Yeah, I think their plan was to go out into the wilderness and camp and then just sort of write about the legends that they had already read. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, I mean, I guess. I mean, otherwise, whatever else they might have done, they failed to do. They didn't conduct yeah, interviews. They didn't put up monster traps or or sensory devices. You know, <laughs> They didn't take notes. No, I mean, if anything, it's really lucky that they, they end up encountering the rake. Because, I mean, like, otherwise, we, you're just, like, you're going to camp and say, hey, we, uh, we were out where the monster was, it is thought to be. But it wasn't. I didn't, I didn't even turn that into an assignment. When I was going through um, law school, I actually was in the Innocence Project. So that's the uh, they're trying to abolish the death penalty the, through like legal work. And we actually did have field trips. I didn't get to go on any of them, but they did have a couple of trips out to scan for the remains of of humans, of uh, bones in some caves, in order to prove that somebody didn't commit the crime. And I'm like I mean, super. Like, I'm super sad. I never got to go. I, I mean, that's actually kind of interesting. But also, conceivably, you could find that stuff. Yeah. And this is like, go out, and if you don't find Bigfoot, you you fail the class. <laughs> In my head, I just thought of a much better like a plot based on my story, where you know you go to a, a, a cave to scan for bones, you find the bones. But then a local guy you've already talked to like shows up out of nowhere and he's like, oh, you found out my secret. Now I got to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. You can... Yeah. It feels like they just didn't give any real thought into how to get these kids out there, which like it's weird because like it's not like it's hard. They just chose the most brain dead way to go about it. They also could have just filmed a couple scenes where they just show them hanging out for a couple of days. Because at least if you have more time elapse, it would show that they could have done things. <laughs> yeah. You know, the work I mean, could uh, have been done. They could have worked on their papers. Yeah, do, do like even something like, you know, they're like archaeology students or something. I mean, it would be yeah, hard to like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something, like just... The fact that they're all basically just taking a course on monsters for well, no, in the description <laughs> it does actually say that they're anthropology students but i forget i thought anthropology was sort of like archaeology where you you go dig things up with tools well in sure case, they yeah didn't, they didn't do that either so yeah, i don't know yeah well yeah that's what i'm saying is like you could have had it relate to that and then have the like weird creepypasta stuff be an unintended hitch in things rather than like we're explicitly going to go out and look for this monster. What if they were digging in a pit for something authentic? You know, like they could be digging up, you know, arrowheads or Native American stuff. Sure. With permission from the tribe, of course. And, you know, but then in the midst of it, creepy stuff keeps happening, you know, and they're like, we need to get out of here. And the teacher's like, no, no, we got to stay and finish this dig. You know, I'm not going to hear your superstitious stories, you know, and it gets creepier and creepier. Well, the thing is, it would take almost no extra effort to have made that the story <laughs> okay all right, all right we gotta stop yeah because they, <laughs> I, I i love workshopping better stories but yeah we gotta work with what we got so okay yeah. okay fine 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 whatever kelly begs to tag along on the field trip 
Jade says no. And then as Jade's about to leave, Kelly asks for tampons. And this important question never gets answered. I mean, did she get them or not? I, I don't know. I, I kind of want to know. Well, you know, considering the events in an upcoming scene, maybe not. Any self-respecting Bigfoot I don't, hunter, I don't know. any Bigfoot hunter would advise against investigation during menstruation. I mean, this is just rule number one. Yeah, honestly. I mean, what are you doing here? <laughs> You're a bunch of amateurs. <laughs> this movie like insists on having such bizarre little details like that. It's like, yeah, what was the point? I think it's supposed to be like, oh, you're becoming a woman now, you know, or something. I guess, but doesn't the immediate scene afterwards where she has a beer kind of do that? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, oh, God. Okay. Like, I need to stop because, like. Connecting to the internet. Oh, God. Take a look at the help section in your Alexa. Alexa, please um i don't, I don't, I don't know why i don't know why he keeps doing that it's it'll sometimes it adds do, to, a, to our horror element honestly no honest to god it will do that at like three o'clock at night and i oh my god I, i'm not a fan <laughs> anyway um let's let's like for real stop workshopping this movie <laughs> it will be <laughs> at it all day so I yeah know, it's a, it's a problem we cut to a, a bright, sunny morning. Everyone is loading up the car for their doomed trip. The natural light looks really nice with this camera slash smartphone. They should have just filmed more outdoor day shots. Yeah. Which I guess yeah, I guess that's also worth shopping. So yeah, moving along. <sighs> it's it's impossible. Yeah. Every scene, I'm just like, why didn't you do more of this? So Jade sends away Kelly, speaking to her the same way one might speak to a dog one was about to abandon in the forest. Go on, girl, you're free now. <laughs> and then uh, Kennedy gets out of the car just as Jade gets into the car and seems to invite Kelly to come along. But later on, it's supposed to be a surprise, and so they should have taken this scene out. Ah, see, again! I'm trying to fix it! <laughs> I think we just have to embrace the fact that this is a movie that you could very easily change so many minor aspects of this movie and, and you would improve it. Yes, yes. Noah creepily checks out Jade as she's sitting next to him in the car. And it seems like at this point Jade has had a lot of screen time and so I just wrote, is Jade the main character? I actually don't know. Yeah, that's. I guess that's kind of how I felt. Oh, well, wait, no. I mean, how things happen later, uh, no, she can't be. <laughs> well, okay, that's maybe the fault of the movie, the fact that they made the wrong character the main character. It was an accident. She became the main character. I tried to stop her. I mean, it kind of feels like it, doesn't it? Yeah, she hijacked this film with her, her Velma snarkiness. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if it's that, but it's like, the teacher does nothing. Yeah. Brace yourself, Jade, for a three-hour trip. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Oh, this is when we learn that the blonde girl is named Kennedy. Oh, Mr. Cooper yeah. is driving. He goes to turn off the milk toast stock rock playing on the radio. Kennedy wants the radio on. She goes to run her hand up his thigh to make him change his mind. And he bats her hand away. I would have given anything for a shot of the back seat with Jade and Noah just staring wide-eyed at the exchange. <laughs> like, I mean, oh yeah, God. honestly. How do you not notice that? There are no secrets in Subarus. They'd have seen everything. <laughs> also, they're, they're talking openly. I mean, I don't know why it's a secret. At some point, they should have just been like, yeah, we know you're sleeping together, whatever. Yeah, I mean, they don't really make an attempt to hide it. Yeah. So they talk briefly about the mythical creature in the car, and Jade just says that her theory is that the, the whole thing is all baloney, and I should hope so, because otherwise you might have thought to bring more security along, or at least a few more co-eds who run slower than you do. Yeah, I'm sorry, like, were there people, were some of them going along under the impression that the creature was real, and that they were just putting themselves in huge amounts of danger? Yeah, because they seem so blasé about it when they're driving there. I mean, I have to imagine yeah. they, they don't believe it's real. 
Yeah. But there's multiple people in the movie, including Mr. Cooper, who knows that, that it's real and that people have died. Well, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves with that. Yeah, sorry. Um, sort of a spoiler, I guess. I mean, not, like, again, not really. If you've ever watched a movie before, you yeah. know you know how that kind of thing works. But yeah, it is interesting to watch the movie again or rewatch it knowing that the teacher knows everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you think about it afterwards, you're just like, oh, right. He knew everything. He brought them here knowing what happens. Okay, I'm sorry, Peter. Yeah. I have to workshop things again. All right. Gonna... All right. Just this I one think, time. But... Okay, well, I mean, we both know that's not the case. Uh, no, I know. Just go ahead. So this whole setup could have been more interesting if the teacher was, like, intentionally getting these kids into a situation where they would be... Oh killed as, like, part of a plan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, like, you know, like maybe he knows a way to kill the creature, and the kids are just kind of there to be, like... Bait? Either, like, either, like, bait or, like, a necessary, like, sacrifice of... Like, some of these kids are gonna have to, like, die to, like, set this up. Yeah, you just made me think of something like, you know, like in Harry Potter, where he can see the, the mirror of his dead parents, you know, and Voldemort or whoever is just like, wouldn't you like your parents back? That'd be great if Mr. Cooper later on is just like, I found out that there was a way. There was a way to get my parents back. And they're like, how? I have to give them a replacement. Yeah, or, or just even... Dun, yeah, dun, something, dun. something. Anything. Because, like, it feels so weird to have that whole setup, knowing that he basically does nothing to... Like, like he, he goes in... Completely unprepared, although he, like, knows what happened. Yeah. And just kind of lets it happen, and it's just kind of like, oops. Yeah, and it's oops. like, what do you expect? Yeah, how did you not have some sort of, yeah, like a, like a plan yeah. to, like, deal with this? Or, or at least the hint of something. Yeah, there, there have been some movies, I think certain slasher films like some of the friday the 13th where they have people who actually did see jason kill someone earlier and there's that weird kind of disbelief like oh this can't have been true but then when they're presented with him again you know they usually do that thing where they're like oh no not again and they'll go into like <laughs> you know a, a murderous rage and try to stop him you know or something like that yeah like, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't do that either so i don't know it's interesting to think about this going forward it feels to me like the movie was written chronologically, and they just didn't go back and revise any of it. Yeah, you know maybe I mean? it was you all filmed I mean? in succession. Well, that's all I'm saying, is it feels like they would come up with an idea, and then they would be like, all right, maybe they'll pay off later on. Or like, all right, hey, this is kind of interesting, with no thought to like how it affects everything before it. I mean, it could also just be that he had a bunch of shots he wanted to do and he never got to finish them. And so this is just a hodgepodge of what he had, just trying to make a story out of it. The movie feels too coherent for that. It's just yeah, not very I, you know, good. Honestly, that would be giving him too much credit to blame the system or, you know, or, or lack of money for it. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're not to uh, advocate for uh, releasing the Brewer Cut. The Brewer Cut, yeah. Yeah. Give him $70 million. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hey, wait, 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 Peter, speaking of, I'm sorry, we're going to, like, massively sidetrack again. Okay. I did, I did watch the Snyder Cut. Yeah, for the viewers at home, I don't know when this podcast is going to go up, but for us, <laughs> the Snyder Cut just came out, like, a day or two ago. Yeah, sorry, this is a sequel to the uh, 28 Days Later episode, uh, and you know what? Technically. Yeah, well, because of this. Now, now you have to watch the other one first. Go back. If you're watching yeah. this one first, you have to go back and watch that one. Sorry. Pause it. I should release them, but I should number them in the order that we filmed them, so it's really confusing. <laughs> yeah. I'll start um, with, like, number five or six or whatever. Yeah. And you know what? I will say this. I watched the Snyder Cut, and I'm not afraid to admit when I'm wrong. The uh, the snare cut 
it was better than the Joss Whedon cut? No. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. It was. I think it's a. I think it's a decent movie. I don't think that it's like reinventing the uh, the superhero wheel, but you know what? I was wrong. Credit where credits do. Zack Snyder made a decent superhero movie. Well, I will not be sitting down for that four-hour travesty. You will never get me to pay for Snyder again. That's going to be a future Patreon exclusive for people who subscribe with, uh, I don't know, let's say $20 or up. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, we'll do, we'll do a Snyder Cut episode. Yeah, yeah, there we'll, you do, go. we'll do a That's commentary a... track where I'm just like, ah, oh, Jesus! <laughs> yeah, I don't care, it's not a horror movie. I mean, like... In a certain yeah. existential sense, I guess it kind of is, but yeah, yeah BBS certainly. So yeah, <laughs> oh, Jesus, yeah. All right. Anyway, so speaking of which, <laughs> for this movie, I did actually groan out loud several times and said "Oh God" a couple of times as well, just in disgust, and not like in shock or whatever. No, yeah, this movie is anything but shocking. So remember how you were saying that you know you thought that Noah was sort of unintentionally creepy, but not really intentionally so, right? For the most part, I would say that's well, true. This is one of the scenes in the backseat of the car that helps cement his status for me as a creep. Because he starts filming Jade with his camera without telling her, just silently. Sure, well, I mean, yeah, that's, for the record, I'm not going to defend that. I, I'm just saying that, in general, I think the, I think what they were going for was unintentionally. He's just kind of an awkward guy. Yeah. I mean, I think that normal awkward would have been the same thing. It's just that you would have been like, hey, can I film you with my camera? And then she like, you know, whether or not she says yes or no, you do. But, you know, that's at least fair warning. But he doesn't even do that. No. He's just like, I'm doing it. Are you going to stop me? <laughs> I mean, that would have been kind of funny. I'm starting to like my Noah voice. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just having a good time here. Do you like smoking pot? You look like a kind of girl that would like to smoke pot. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot about that. Not like in a bad way, but you know. <laughs> I actually, I like that line because it's like, that's so awkward. Yes. <laughs> but it's like, it's awkward in a way that's like, it's very cringy, but like also like, yeah, I guess I could see someone like him saying that. I don't want to say it's endearing, but I mean, it's, I don't know. I've heard worse, I guess. Yeah, yeah. After that, Kennedy from the front seat says, you know, Noah, you're really starting to grow on me. And he's just like, oh, okay. Well, okay. Look, I'm gonna, my favorite line. I will say this, not to defend Noah again. How else would you respond to that? Yeah, I don't know what you would say. <laughs> Maybe like, nothing, I guess. You just yeah. kind of like shrug. Thank, All right, whatever. Thanks, man. That's cool. So Kennedy asks for a pee break, and uh, Mr. Cooper says they are almost there. He won't stop for anything. He's just like his idiot father. It's like poetry. His father's legacy lives with him. He will not stop that car until they reach their destination. There is no discussion. <laughs> um, I mean, that's just good filmmaking, man. Exactly. It's cyclical. Yeah, it echoes, rhymes. The sins of the father visited <laughs> upon the son. <laughs> oh yeah and then in protest kennedy grabs the steering wheel and just like swerves the car dangerously before mr cooper can regain control oh yeah that's just it's just nuts uh, yeah I, uh, yeah i had a, a note about that this is being over dramatic <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ yeah no i think i would have called off the trip if anyone did that i'm just like okay we're done yeah. I'm bringing you home right now, and you're sitting in the back seat. By the way, we're still, we're still supposed to like this uh, character. Are we? I think so. I don't know for sure, but I think the movie tries to soften everyone at the end, like they all, you know, have an arc. So I thought the idea was that they start as bad people that you don't like, and then they kind of grow on you, or they reform themselves. Yeah, but like, I kind of feel like she's supposed to be like a little mean but she is she's like a thousand percent mean yeah, yeah yeah but like i don't know if that was really what they were i don't know if that's how the character was supposed to read to an audience you know yeah i don't know i'm not sure because it does feel like 
Well, she's sleeping with the TA to try to get out of doing work and, you know, and get an easy A. I can't imagine you're supposed to love this character. No, but like, I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. Like you said, they do take some pains to try and make them like a little bit more likable later on. So like, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's odd because like, also a lot of that growth is uh, very unearned. Uh, so, it's a little so, out of nowhere for some of them, especially. It's hard for me to say like, is it just like bad writing? Or, like, were they intended to be more sympathetic? And then the movie's just, like, structured in a way where that just doesn't work out, you know? Yeah. Uh, so the sudden movement of the car elicits a groan from the trunk area. Who could it be, Jacob? Gosh, who can say? So Mr. Cooper pulls over. He finds Kelly in his, well, not his trunk. It's the rear storage area. So she was just sitting there in the open air behind everybody, not saying anything. Mm. I suspect that, you know, they thought of a different car when they were making this. Later on in the film, they refer to this car as a truck. It is not a truck. No. Oh, wait a minute. Not. Trucks don't have trunks either. Well, maybe she would have just been, like, in the flatbed. That was what I was thinking. Kennedy confirms she helped hide Kelly in the back. Jade yanks on Kennedy's hair, and Noah films it. I mean, actually, I, I approve of that one. Yeah. I mean, you just got to film that if that ever happens. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Meanwhile, a white truck pulls up and a scruffy old man asks if the group needs help. The guy weirdly asks them if they're going camping. They say yes. He asks where. They say Joshua Tree. He says it's not a good night for camping. They ask why. He says, <laughs> or no, he should have said, because I'm going to follow you there and kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Like, why'd you tell him everything? Yeah. Yeah, or I guess, like, why not just say what's going on? Well, I don't know. I just think that, you know, for a stranger, like, it's a weird dude in a truck that just drives up, and he's like, hey, where are you going? How many of you are you? Are you armed? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's like this is maybe the worst example of the, like, you kids shouldn't go out that way guy. Yeah, a horror movie, because, like, usually they'll give you some indication of what's up. You know, like, maybe some people have died, or maybe there's, like, a legend or something. They'll give you, like, some kind of warning, or, like, by their nature, they'll be creepy, and they'll be, like, part of whatever is going on. Yeah, but, like, well, I mean, he, sa he says that, like, oh, this isn't a good night for this trip. And they're like, well, what do you mean? And he's like, it's just not. But... They already know what he means. So, like, are they playing dumb? Or was this scene filmed separately and they had a different plot line where they didn't know what was happening? See, I feel like this is more evidence for my... This was written all in one go linearly. <laughs> yeah. Where, like, they wrote this out because this is what you do in a horror movie without really considering that you would have to go back and change a few things to account for this it feels like yeah they, they wrote the scene and they just had no conception of the fact that this including this means you have to like go back and rewrite some of the stuff you did previously this guy seems like the old guy at the beginning of cabin in the woods where he's just inducting victims into his own yeah i mean like not the that he's coming in for the slaughter <laughs> I mean, not that it helps, but uh, if they didn't know what was going on, that would be, like, extra cryptic and extra useless. Just like, you know, yeah. oh, it's bad. And what, is it going to rain? Yeah. Like, all right. It's Comanche country. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Peter. What if that happened in the line? I mean, like, then you would want to not listen to him, you know? Like, in a way, <laughs> the audience would be on board. You're like, oh, you can't listen to this guy. I, uh... He's still in the 1890s. Okay, they, uh, there's something there. I don't think he could. I don't think it'd be a good. I don't think it'd be a good reason to make a whole movie around it. But it would be no, very. No. no, 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 no. Hear me out. What I'm saying is, it would be very funny to do a movie like this, where you have that scene where the guy tries to warn people of what's going on, but by yeah. the very, but by the very nature of what it is, you just kind of sound like a like a like a bigoted 
freak that you shouldn't, <laughs> they shouldn't pay attention to. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, like if there was like, you know, like a killer, like Native American ghost or whatever, and, and the guy was just like warning people about the Indians out there. It's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, it's like, Spooky it, Indians. Yeah, no, that's no, that's like it's like he's trying and he's not even wrong. Why like, would anyone listen? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like group after group going in and dying. <laughs> oh man, stupid college kids. See, okay, you know what this is? This is like an internet skit <laughs> where you where you yeah. do that. Where you, yeah, for college or. College humor or funny or die. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I think there's something to that. Synth cello strikes and... up as the sunset approaches that night. Synth cello is concerned music if ever I've heard it. I mean, I was concerned when I heard it. <laughs> synth cello is such a, it's just a low budget staple. It's just like, mwah. It's just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you can't afford someone to play it. You know, you, you can't afford permission for a better song so you just get some local guy to just you know noodle around on a synth board for like a couple of hours i must have seen i don't know hundreds of horror films in the, especially the i feel like the 90s was the biggest time where all that fake synth was really prevalent yeah yeah it flavors a movie in a way honestly it kind of brands it it, it, it sort of cements that you're not watching something you're not watching something good i mean i i don't want to be cruel but it's just like if you hear fake strings that are obviously fake you're just like oh all right well that, that's what this is all right then you know what i, I was thinking about this because I, I was watching other uh like trailers for movies i'm trying to pick this one out and it, it's strange because i i, I did watch and see a few good movies like legitimately good movies i like, passed up in favor of this uh which which <laughs> like it which hurt me on a, on a certain level but i did notice yeah. that uh there's a tendency for bad horror trailers to do that like jerky kind of like tilt in a certain direction in tune with like this music where it's like it's sort of like a ticking thing I, I can't really describe it, but I noticed a, a disproportionate huh. number of bad movies on Netflix that use this effect, and I think it was used maybe in one of the like Jordan Peele trailers. Oh, really? uh, yeah, yeah, but like it was like one. It was they do it because of that, though. Oh, hmm. I don't know. It was interesting. Yeah, maybe I've become out of sync with the new era of bad horror filmmaking maybe i haven't found these new landmarks for when a movie is just cutting cheap <laughs> yeah it's i don't know it's interesting because like they're none of those movies were like super cheap because like the tubi stuff is like on a completely different level but it's just kind of like bad yeah like bad like netflix tier horror movies where, you, where it's just like yeah, yeah you can just tell this has no original ideas to it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i see yeah, I don't know. So they unpack and they strike up a fire out in the rocky desert. Noah is once again filming Jade without her permission <laughs> as she she's standing in front of the fire. Yeah, I will say it becomes harder and harder to justify his creepiness as the movie goes on. It's an apex. This is maximum creep because he keeps doing it. It compounds itself each time he films her without permission. Yeah. But this is the end of that. I mean, after this, they start to give him a little more humanity oh that's so, like i don't know why yeah that's true they do it like this yeah i feel like this is like not a great way to endear characters to you yeah like i feel like i mean it's, it's one thing to have unlikable characters but like i feel like they kind of have to have something going on for them first and then you can introduce some unlikable elements and then you build up the likable stuff or maybe you could start real harsh you know have people unlikable and then you would it's like a transformation for the audience when you, you know, you show them that they can be liked and then you actually get them to like that person. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I get it. I, yeah. I mean, there are ways to do. I think that's what this is an attempt to do. Yeah. It's just, it doesn't, it doesn't really land. The interesting thing is that right after this, Kelly takes the camera from him 
and then films him and starts asking him questions. And this seems to be the weird, I don't know how to describe it, you know, the turnaround moment, you know, when maybe he becomes more self-aware of like how awkward he is and how he shouldn't be doing the stuff he does on a regular basis. Yeah, I can see that. Or at least I, I choose to see it that way because it gives the story slightly more credit. It does, but it doesn't feel like he acknowledges it, even if the plot does, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh yeah, also Kennedy hands out a beer to everyone, including underage Kelly. Yeah, well, that's how you know they're cool. I mean, Jade doesn't say anything, so I feel like it's probably alright. Yeah, if all of these bad people approve of it, how bad can it really be? <laughs> yeah. That's part of it. They encourage Mr. Cooper to sit down with them and tell a ghost story. And I, I just at this point, I'm just like, isn't this Raker thing only supposed to be out for one night? Shouldn't they be putting up motion sensors and tripwires? Like, what are we... Honestly, now, what are they doing here? Yeah. I. This is... You have a single night to do this. Just one night. Yeah, this is... This is maybe one of the things that kind of goes against my, like, linear written theory. Just how much they drag on stuff that they shouldn't be. You know, with things being written as they are. Yeah. That's the only thing that makes me think that at some point, maybe earlier on in the drafts, there was less of a ticking time bomb with this. I mean, even then, it's, a, it's yeah. not even like there's a ticking time bomb. It's just like, if they nothing happens, yeah. nothing happens. Worst case scenario is that they all get to live and go home <laughs> and live their lives. Yeah. Heaven forbid. So Mr. Cooper tells a story of some college girls that went missing 20 years ago. I guess they were killed with an axe or a hatchet. Mm -hmm. And then two years after that, so I guess that's 18 years ago, a girl going home is frightened by the sounds of footsteps behind her. She got home. She barricaded herself in a room, fell asleep. And then the next morning she leaves a room and slips and falls Turns out she's in blood, and the mutilated body of her friend is just on the other side of the door, and a bloody hatchet is stuck in the wall! What does this have to do with the rage? I think there actually is a purpose to the story. Is there? Well, okay, it's a theory. Okay. I think that because of what they don't do later, that they really should do, <laughs> that this is a... An, I don't know what we call it, an analogy or an allegory or whatever for what they later don't do. Okay. This girl locks herself in a room and just falls asleep and waits it out. And after the night of terror, she just finds a corpse. That's essentially what they kind of do shortly thereafter. I get it, but it feels so unrelated. Well, yeah. This feels like another setup thing that just doesn't pay off. I mean, also, they don't do the story cleanly if that's the case, because they don't just lock themselves into a room and wait it out. They should do that, but they don't. Yeah, I worked out better if they did. I guess maybe the idea of the story is that they unknowingly abandoned a friend. Well, wait, no, that doesn't work either, because, spoiler alert, they soon, they knowingly abandon a friend. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is, it's, uh, I don't know, it doesn't work. I was like, this movie sucks. Yeah, no, it does. It, like, yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry. This, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. This movie blows ass. This is like... <laughs> like, I know we started saying don't watch this, but like, don't, just don't watch it. It's not It's not worth it. Well, no, I'm not going to be like that. I, I th uh, see, well, here's the thing. You know, I really am an aficionado of horror. So, like, I'm willing to really sift through some bad stuff to get a couple of good scenes. But... I wouldn't recommend it to your average John or Jane Doe. <laughs> no. You should probably find something a little tighter, a little a little better made. Peter, this movie's nearly two hours long. How much of this movie is, like, worth sitting through? See, For really being... An hour and 40 minutes? Well, sure, but it's, it's nearly two hours long. We're talking how many minutes? Because we haven't reached it yet. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just think it's important to look on the brighter side of life. That's all I'm saying. I mean, the brighter side of life would be just watching a better movie. <laughs> all right, all right. So, yeah. But I was also thinking after they, they heard this story that this lady locks herself in and then she finds her dead friend. I was just like, sounds like a job well done to me. I mean, how many horror films might have been prevented if the creeped out person had just locked themselves in a room? Yeah. 
The only exception is a tree from Happy Death Day. She locks herself in her room and still almost gets murdered. Oh, no, wait, she does get murdered. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, extenuating. Spoiler alert, but not really. Extenuating circumstances there. That's, yeah. Also, multiple, you know, murderings of the same person. So, yeah, that's the whole thing. So Noah takes the camera back and films Kelly, asks her about the Joshua Tree. Oh, no, no, not about the Joshua Tree, about Joshua Tree, the geographic location that they are in. Yes. I keep forgetting that it's a place. <laughs> Mr. Cooper goes off to take a leak, and uh, Kennedy sneaks off to seduce him. I mean, yay, I guess. Yeah. This is the point when you need to remember, you know, remind yourself, this is the director of the film. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, I guess we're going to have to film another makeout scene. Well... <laughs> yeah. Oh man, can't be helped. No oh, shucks. The rest of the group get—they seem to get really drunk or just act drunk—and they ask each other silly questions for the camera. Cheap dates, a lot of them. Um. Uh, yeah. Also, some just god awful drunk acting. I don't know. It's actually my favorite scene with them. Maybe just because it almost seems like a real scene. And they're getting along, and I don't know, their chemistry isn't stiff and horrible like it was in earlier scenes. I, I mean, I think both of our statements can be true. Yeah, I guess all of that, <laughs> all of the above is true. Yeah. While making out with Mr. Cooper, Kennedy stops and just, like, says, Ow! I feel like something's scratching me. But her back is against a stone wall. And I wonder if the stone wall is fake. Because from certain shots, it looks like it was created with CG. And I wonder if there was supposed to be darkness there and they added the stone later. Because when I was watching the movie, I was firmly of the belief that there was a weird power that the rake had where he could emerge out of stone walls. And that he would emerge out of it because of how fake it looked, you know? That he would just be like, ah! Because otherwise, how would his claw come out of a stone wall? I don't understand. Well, he reached down with his very long hands. I guess. I don't know. Okay. I, that's the only thing that makes a certain amount of sense to me. But that also would have been a very creepy shot that would have made this movie kind of scary. Well, at least if he had emerged from a stone wall, it would have really cemented that he is a mythological creature with unknowable powers, and you should be afraid of him. It would also explain why people can't find him all the time. Well, like, yeah, that's weird, too, because like, that shot when she like says she like felt a scratch on her back... There's not yeah. like a trick of the camera work where like you can't see the rock and, you, and then you can see all the rocks behind her. The rock is behind her the whole time. You see the wall. You yeah. see nothing. I mean, you see where she would have been scraped, sort of. There's just no there's just no way she could have been cut by anything. Yeah. I don't know. It's very weird. She's like, oh, why did you scratch me? You know, which makes it sound almost like a playful thing. But then like shortly thereafter... She shows people the scar, and it's a horrible, <laughs> jagged cut. Yeah. Hey, what? You're just like, oh, what did that happen? Yeah, oh, oh, why do you maul me? <laughs> yeah. Or, I mean, if, if she thought that he had done that, she should have, like, screamed and then slapped him. Be like, you crazy bastard! Yeah. No, I know. It's like, those are, like, long cuts. Maybe they get really inflamed. So maybe it was just, like, a little scratch, and then they just get real puffy. Uh, no, let's not add more... Rake for the list. This isn't like, but it isn't helpful. It's not the rake that kills you. It's your own immune response overreacting. You just get all puffy and you die. Jesus Christ. Anaphylactic shock. She choked on her own tongue. Actually, yeah, that, that's that would actually be really funny. Uh, that, yeah, that's more, that's more of like an SCP it thing. Just touch you like a little bit. That's yeah. really more of like an SCP thing where they're like. Ooh, we have this mysterious thing. Let's categorize every single thing it can do to remove every single possible mystery from it. <laughs> I, guess, I guess that's neat. Have fun with that. Encyclopedia of horror things you aren't afraid of. <laughs> well, that is actually like a really, that's a great summary of SCPs. Here's what this is. <laughs> Here yeah. is like how you can theoretically neutralize it. Here is, like, all the limitations of its powers. By the way, it's also locked up, so you don't have to worry about it. And it's like, what the hell is the point of this? Where exactly did all of that come from? Anyway? I'm not entirely sure about the origins, so I'm not going to say, because if I even hazard a guess, I'm going to get people mad. 
I mean, I know it started as like a okay. like a crowdsourced Wikipedia ish project where everyone just kind of like made up their own things, and then they yeah. kind of like ex you know, and then like you know, as the nature of those things go, they like expanded in time, and everyone added their own SCPs to it, and everyone felt the need to like add more, like change more lore or whatever, and just kind of like grew out of control. <laughs> so it's just kind of like creepypasta, but, you know, even more nerdy and boring. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, there's some merit to some of the ideas, but, like, I just don't find the idea of already defeated and pre-contained horror things all being in one area. Yeah. Like, that's just, the, that's like, that's the end of the story. <laughs> I guess that's true. It's sort of after the fact, after the uh, the hazard crew has come through and cleaned up everything. Yeah. I mean, which is, like, neat in and of itself. That makes, like, what they do interesting. It makes SCPs themselves less interesting. Hey, did you ever play that game, uh, Viscera Cleanup Detail? Uh, a little bit. This is just one of those stupid tangents. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I was just, I love the idea of that game where you, you come in after the, the great thing, you know, or the horror movie thing has happened and you're just a janitor just mopping up blood. Oh, yeah. No, like, that's, that's a fantastic premise for a game. I love it. I can't remember. I, I think I, I'm pretty sure I got it for free as part of some, like, monthly promotional, maybe like a Twitch, maybe it's like a Twitch Prime thing. I'm not sure. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so Kennedy runs back to the group and she announces to everyone that, oh, someone grabbed me. And then Noah points at her and it's just like, yeah, I see what you did there. You almost had me. And I thought for a second that he was going to say, oh, we all know you and Mr. Cooper are banging. We don't care. <laughs> Such a wasted opportunity. Yeah. I mean, you see what we're doing, even when we're trying not to workshop it. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. It's like, I mean, this, yeah. I'll try to shorten them. That's all I can this do. This movie insists that you do this. Kennedy shows the nasty wound she somehow got while her back was to a stone wall. I mean, as we've already discussed. Yeah. Also, that, like, happened... Things get tense. Happened in such a way as to also not ruin her clothing. Right. She has to pull up her shirt <laughs> to show a long scratch. Wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. Oh, man. <laughs> there are so many problems with this. Oh, this movie's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> I don't have to keep saying it. Hang on. Yeah, it's it's like even when you like start to think about stuff like that, then you'll like remember some extra detail, and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, you can't salvage this. Yeah, I would have had her going through low bushes because then she could have had little cuts, you know, and then one could have just ended up being the monster, and it's like too deep, and you're just like, what the hell is this? You know, that kind of a thing. Yeah. Because sometimes you do get weird scratches under clothing, like it'll like reach up, like while you're trying to get through something. Yeah, but like you saw her back the whole time. Yeah, it just, <laughs> yeah, we did. Just doesn't make any sense. If they had not shown that scene, you know, because then she could have come back, and you know, you wouldn't have known what happened or did not, you know. So you could have just whatever you imagined would have made more sense. Literally, all you need to do is just not show her back while that's happening. Yeah. <laughs> And the whole yeah. thing still has some plausible deniability to it. Yeah. I mean, we do find out later, though, that this thing really can't hide, and it also makes a ton of noise. <laughs> so there's no way it could have, like, snuck up on her and just scratched her, you know? But that's a whole other can of worms. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to it. You finally hear the first roar of this thing. It sounds to me like a mix of an angry bear and a, and a lion growl. It's hard to say. But that's often what they do for monster roars. You just mix a couple of large mammal yells together. Noah takes his camera back. I can only assume that he is determined to die on film. He's just like, I, I got I to gotta, I gotta have this for posterity. See, okay, that's... Oh, Jesus, this is rookie lane. Doing this again. This movie has a weird... It keeps doing these found footage-ish. Yes. Little, like, segments of filming... And I wonder if if it, this was intended to be a found footage movie that they just like couldn't make into one. 
I don't know. Maybe. I mean, they would have had an, an additional character who was always holding the camera if that was the case. I mean, maybe that just would have been Noah. Hmm. I, yeah. yeah. It should have been. I mean, he's already kind of a creep anyway. Yeah, I don't know. It's... Like, he already likes to silently film people, so hmm. yeah. A lot of these, like, problems probably could have been alleviated if it was a fountain footage movie. Because you could have had that scene, yeah. and then... From their perspective, you know, you could have, like, hidden things so the rocks weren't, her back wasn't visible or whatever. Or or she could have even just been, like, well, off I'm, camera when that stuff was happening. Well, yeah, like you said, you could just take a scene out and it would have made sense. Yeah. I think this whole movie would have gone down another point for me if it had been shaky cam. Or, or not shaky cam, there is some of that. If it had all been found footage. Because then it would all be horrible shaky cam and, you know, just fake realism. Uh, I'm I'm glad we've gotten out of that phase of cinema. I mean, yeah, but like the movie doesn't even fully dedicate to that, though. After Noah gets the camera, he miraculously manages to get decent shots of what appears to be a large goblin of the Lord of the Rings variety. <laughs> uh, yes. Or at least that was my first thought when I saw it. I was like, yeah, yeah, it's like an orc or something. I mean, it's a guy in a rubber suit. It's not a bad suit, I have to say, but the eyes leave something to be desired. They are real, I forget what you call it, uh, like foamy stuff where the, the eyes are supposed to be so that he can see through. I assume it's a guy. I, it could be a girl, but whatever. But it, it looks weird and sort of insect-like. I think it looks acceptable from a distance, but when you get too close, it doesn't look right at all. Yeah, and the movie also later on insists on holding on the creature way too long. So you can really just drink in the details uh, yeah just don't don't do that not filming the creature is like the easiest thing to do in a horror movie yeah i actually really like the shot that noah has of the monster that he gets because it's you don't really see it directly and it's moving around you only kind of see its shoulder and its head yeah i actually thought it was kind of creepy no, no no yeah that was pretty good it's just that later on you got a lot of full body it's just leering you know at the and everyone is just like, don't do that. So yeah, shaky cam does break out in earnest. And I just wrote so much shaky cam. Everyone runs. Oh yeah, Mr. Cooper says get back in the truck. But it's not a truck, it's a Subaru. It would have actually been great if someone had said that. You know, and he's like, it's not a truck, it's a Subaru. He's like, it's a truck! <laughs> I thought actually for a second they had, they had brought a second vehicle and they would have gone to a real truck. Oh man, you guys prepared. Great. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. They get in the car, and, you know, there's the old staple of, you know, you, you turn the ignition on the car with your keys, and the car doesn't turn on, you know, or maybe it just stalls. But this is a new car, and they can't do that, so all they have is the, the push-button start. And so they just put a red light behind it, so the guy just keeps pushing the, the start button, and it won't start. I have to say that watching somebody anxiously push an auto-start button looks really silly. Like, it's just yeah, not cinematic. No, that's, it's not great. Writing notes for this film, you know, as I watched it, I have a lot of things I write and then I cross it out because it's, it's contradicted later or otherwise just messed up. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I just noted that nobody has tried using a phone yet, even though they're clearly in trouble and they're trapped in a car that doesn't work. Yeah. So if they call the police now, I mean, my guess as I was writing, is like, ah, well, it might take 40 minutes for a squad car to roll up. And, you know, that's usually more than enough time to get killed by a monster. So even if you do call the cops, it doesn't make any difference. So why you might as well just show people calling right away just to prove the pointlessness of it. It actually, you know? Yeah. Well, thankfully we do see that later on. And... They do eventually use their phones. I, I mean, way too late, yeah. but, you know, they try. Way too late, and I love that the teacher just can't come up with an excuse to get the police out there. He just completely fumb... That is very strange. Well, he just kind of, like, fumbles around with yeah. it, like... His only options are either to, like, not say anything, or say, a creepy pasta monster is after us. Just say that yeah. you have, like, you're dealing with, like, an animal attack. Well, yeah, just or that you're in physical danger. You know, you don't have to get super specific. Yeah, I mean, he just kind of like dodges around it because he's like, "Well, I don't want to say it's the break, but it's like you don't, you, you don't have to." Just say it's a person attacking you. Yeah, 
It's such a weird conversation. That's a later incompetence, but first there's this part. Mr. Cooper says the battery is dead. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen an earlier scene where he, he's got like a half dozen stupid accessories plugged into his car while the engine is off. <laughs> the air conditioning was too cold, so I opened the car door a crack and took a nap. Also, I have this electric drinky drinky bird. I know it's a power drain, but I just love it. Hey, here. Check out my little ice maker. I use it with this little blender so I can make <laughs> margaritas. And here's this Billy Big Mouth bass. It's like, <laughs> it's like just unplug <laughs> some of this. What are you doing, man? You knew you were driving out <laughs> into the desert. But, you know, I, I choose to believe that the rake is a creature of entropy, and he causes everything to not work around him. Uh, that's awfully convenient. Well, remember earlier, the mom was trying to open a door and couldn't for some reason. Either she forgot how, or maybe... This scene doesn't make any sense unless the door, like, the door handle just jammed up for no reason. Yeah, but don't... Don't give them credit like this. That's not a thing <laughs> they planned, come on. They do mention the phones at this point, you know, when they're all trapped in the car, eventually. Yeah. But they say that nobody has a signal, so there's that answered. You know, but maybe they can play some Candy Crush before they're all gored to death. The monster harasses the car for a while, then it opens the passenger rear door and drags out poor Kelly. Did it always know how to open car doors? And even if it didn't, why was it unlocked? Did it unlock of its own accord? Or, like... When the battery is dead, do all the doors automatically unlock? Is that a safety feature? I mean, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. No. He should have just ripped the door off of its hinges, because then that would have proved two things. One, that the director cared about the movie. And two, that the monster is really strong. Um, yeah, nobody, nobody's, <laughs> Peter, nobody's destroying a car for this movie. Yeah. Man, this is my Subaru. You are not tearing that door off. No, that's true. It's that someone's car. They're not. Uh, they're not destroying a car over that. Yeah. This isn't. Uh, maybe if it was a shittier car, but uh, it's not that bad. And I, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge Kelly and to mourn her because she is a nice character. She's sweet. She's kind to everyone. She just was bored. You know, she's probably evading as I guessed earlier maybe dysfunctional parents or a rough home or something and she gets dragged away for no reason like she's like the last person i wanted to see die in this whole film you know i was so sad when it came to this point because it made me realize that this movie wasn't gonna end well <laughs> for anybody i guess uh yeah at that point you kind of like like once they kill off the one character that's like redeemable and likable you can kind of just assume that they're going to kill everyone. Yeah. Jade tries to hold on, but she's not strong enough. You know, whatever. She's she's doing a tug of war with a monster, so you can't really blame her for this. But she does spend the rest of the movie blaming herself for this. I don't know. I suppose you would. Yeah, I mean, it's like the One Piece characterization she has now. Just give her that. Yeah. Bright lights fill the area. The weird old man in the white truck has arrived. And he's got a shotgun. They're, like, oddly suspicious of a savior. I mean, they were begging for help and trying to call the cops moments ago. And then Kelly was dragged off, presumably to her death. And then this guy shows up, and they're like, can we trust him? I don't know if we should go. You guys were just begging for <laughs> help. What do you, What do you, What is this discussion you're having? What if he's teamed up with the monster? Yeah. I mean, also, better ending if he had been. Ooh, maybe. Yeah. Oh. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. Okay. He, like, leads them into a room, and it's, like, got, like, a garage door on one side. And it's all, like, built for security, and he just locks them in, and then just opens the garage door, and the monster comes in. <laughs> <laughs> See, that, yeah. He leaves me alone if I feed him now and again. That would be, yeah, something like that would be good. I like that, but... Well, I don't know if it would, but it, at least it would have been fun. yeah. I don't know, the movie needed something like that, though. Well, I mean, it would have explained him better, because we get some characterization from this old man here in a minute, and uh, it doesn't really explain why he would be hanging out and not killing this thing. I mean, he just says he can't, but that's that's nonsense. There's always a way. And also, like, if he thinks he can't kill it, what's... 
not only the point of him being there, but also the point of uh, everything he does in the movie past this point. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Because, like, we'll get yeah. to it. We're no, 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 I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, like, it doesn't make any sense. The five of them drive to the old man's one story ranch house. There are three huge floodlights on his roof. It looks like a great place to conduct an illegal car race. <laughs> At least if you've seen, like, a Fast and Furious movie, like one of the early ones before they were, like, doing superhero stuff. Uh, I was just focusing on the grill. There's this great shot of the white truck when they're getting out of it, and you see that. The uh, the flashlights on top, they're supposed to be like in a rack or something, but they didn't want to do that. So they just strapped a couple of big flashlights to the top of this guy's truck. <laughs> and then they put like napkins underneath it so that it wouldn't scrape the paint. Yeah. I was just like, mm, perfect. We call that <laughs> seamless movie magic. One of them says, what's with all the lights? Are you scared of the dark? And he's just like, I am scared of the dark. Tonight, you should be too. The old guy, his actor, is acting. He is trying so yeah. much harder than everyone else. I'm not saying it's much better. The old, it's not yeah. much better, but it is funny how much more effort he's putting in. Yeah, I don't know this this actor. His name is uh, Marshall Hilton, but... No, I mean, he's trying so much more. I don't blame him for any of this. You know, it's not his fault. no. Like, a lot of these actors will just kind of, like, dormlessly walk into a scene like, huh? And he's like, no, yeah. look, I have problems. And it's like, it's yeah. so refreshing. <laughs> yeah. Just that little baseline is like, all right, movies, they can have characters. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what's happening here. Yeah. Almost forgot. They walk inside, and the old man says his name is James. Noah asks if that is his first name or his last name, and the old man just looks at him for, like, a really long time. <laughs> Not gonna lie, that made me laugh. <laughs> it was, yeah. I thought it was a pretty good joke. Yeah. It's just like, why? Why Why are you asking? Him? Uh, yeah, no, it's great. It's just, like, it's important. I, I, I need to know. Is your first name or your last name, man? It's James. James, thanks for bringing it up. It's painful to me. So, yeah, there's no decent audio equipment, so everything sounds all echoey and flat inside. I mean, it's not a big deal, I guess, but it's... If you... This this brewer guy, I mean, he's a titan of industry. He doesn't need fancy equipment. He doesn't need professionals. He just, you know, you just need to have a camera and a will. A will to make <laughs> a movie! I, I will say, though, if you're going to spend the entire rest of your movie in a house... Maybe just go in on some sound. Yeah, well, yeah anyway. it's like... Yeah. It doesn't have to be good. Or just dub it, it just Yeah, it just has to not be the smartphone. Yeah. Because it sounds like the echoey stuff you would hear in a real estate video tour of a house that's empty. Yeah. I'm not saying you'd vastly improve this movie, but there are just a lot of little things that you could do that would just make it such a better B-horror movie. Maybe we're being a little too hard on this film. I mean, well, everything's relative. I feel a little bad because I couldn't figure out what the production number was for this film. It's just too obscure that they don't even bother mentioning it. Maybe this is a really good product for how little he spent. Maybe this is a mostly free movie or, you know, maybe just a couple of grand. Well, but, but, but like you said, we can't... In which case, amazing. We can't know for certain. And also, I feel like you're doing a disservice to... Uh... Well, the high-quality short films you can see on, uh, you know, platforms like YouTube. Yeah. Speaking of which, we should do an episode or two every now and then where we just go through some great shorts we found. Because there are some amazing short things on the internet. Oh, of. yeah, absolutely. I'll say, like, yeah. that kind of thing is why I don't feel too bad picking on this stuff. Because, like, there are people who work with less who get way better results. Yeah. So the old man... Brings them all into his kitchen, drinks out of a hip flask, and he explains that the monster attacks people and only comes out at the equinox, which is two things they already know. Uh, yeah. Also, he pulls out a uh, very large, badass-looking knife. Yeah, he does. He says, like, oh, it can't be killed. And they're like, well, how do you know that? And he's like, he pulls out this big, crazy knife, and he's just like, well, 
I'm pretty good at killing people. No, not people. I'm a hunter. <laughs> I'm a retired hunter. Yeah. It's interesting. They just listen to him talk, and he's telling them mostly stuff that they already know, which is to say he doesn't tell them a lot. Mm-hmm. But I was wondering, maybe they're just humoring him because he's a drunk and dangerous old man. Um, yeah, I mean, he... Don't argue I, with him. I, I don't know if that's the motivation, but he does strike me as a drunk and dangerous man. Yeah. I mean, look, if you haven't watched this movie or aren't going to watch this movie, I cannot overstate how large that knife is. He's practically a yeah. short sword. Good lord. He says he's been dealing with this thing since before you were born. He says, all of yuz. And I had the captioning on, and yuz is spelled Y-A-S. It was a nice touch. I wonder if, if director Brewer wrote that himself. He says, all of yuz. Honestly, I didn't watch it with subtitles on. I wouldn't know. But uh... Well, the audio is terrible, so I was just trying to make sure that I could actually hear what people were saying throughout. It's really annoying to have to replay a scene when you didn't like it the first time. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I, well, I, also, I just don't think the director has that much say in what the, uh, the 2 be closed captioning decides to go with. Yeah. He made an exclusive deal with 2 be <laughs> He got to write all of the closed captioning. So the guy says, you don't fight what you can't kill. He explains that he's a semi-retired hunter. He lost his brother to the beast 36 years ago. And they see a picture of him together with his brother. And uh, they're wearing stuff that makes it seem like it was probably not 36 years ago. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I don't know. I didn't stop long enough to really peruse it. But it, it seemed like they were wearing like the neon hunting camo stuff that is more recent than that. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, no, no. that's actually the thing. Okay, fine. But yeah, then he, I don't know, at this point, he, he actually gives a pretty decent performance. He seems genuinely crushed by the death of this brother you've never met and died like 36 years no, ago. No, that's what I'm saying. He, he, I don't know if he, he's like, he's, yeah. the, he's, this movie has an actor in it. And he's the only one. Yeah. I'm not sure if he actually cries, but it seems like he does, which is honestly impressive when you can just muster tears on command. Yeah, I mean, he's like, it's like, he's kind of a weird... Oh, speaking of which, Jade does that too, so I'll I'll give Jade a little credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that her sadness, which we'll get to in a little bit. She's the other one that's not... I mean, I guess, like, not to, like, be pretentious about it, she's performing, he's acting, you know what I mean? I feel like there's a difference. Yeah. Well, she can't do the irritation acting earlier in the movie. It's a weird effect because this side character is on such a different level from everyone else that it yeah. makes everything around it feel weird. It makes me sad because when I'm watching this hunter explain his story and just be really sad, it made me almost forget about the entire rest <laughs> of the movie for a moment. Like it was that good. Where I'm yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, I know. Am I watching a movie? This seems like a movie. Yeah, it's like there's like this weird sort of pseudo reality. And then there's like, oh, there's the guy. It feels like unreality stepped into like into his reality when they when they arrived because it's like yeah. suddenly a whole bunch of characters showed up. He's just a guy. Now there are characters here. So everyone gets to have their scene now. This is the <laughs> part you know, like yeah. in a zombie movie when you're all trapped together, so you all get to have a speech. Yeah, Jade gives her. You have no idea what I'm going through speech. She storms off to the bathroom. Mr. Cooper says, let her go. Like, I don't know why he would say that. But then Noah says, no, I don't think I will. Rather dramatically. Yeah, but also makes a lot of sense. That's like the least awkward thing he does. See, this is the thing. It's like they're trying to reform each character like real quickly in these last few moments before (laughs) they're all torn (laughs) apart one by one. Yeah. So yeah, Mr. Cooper and Kennedy hug. And I just wrote, please, guys, call the police already. Lives are literally at stake. <laughs> I can't, yeah. They still haven't. Yeah, no. They have a landline. They know they have it. They still haven't called. Jesus Christ. Jade weeps in the bathroom. She finds a straight razor in the medicine cabinet. God damn it, movie. <laughs> really? I mean, we're going to do this in this movie? Uh, you're going you're gonna to make me comment on this? Oh, God. What? They deal with a serious subject in this serious movie about the internet creepypasta monster. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess she contemplates suicide and then 
contemplated suicide. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't, I can't break into the song. But no, um, Noah knocks on the door <laughs> and interrupts her. Yeah. And I guess from there on, they have kind of an understanding and respect for one another. I mean, they have a couple more scenes where they do stuff and it's nice. Yeah. But I mean, this is sort of the beginning of it. Yeah, no, it's nice to like finally uh, yeah, have th- these characters form relationships 20 minutes before the end of the movie. Yeah, it's a shame they weren't doing this the whole time and weren't just being weird and, and aggressive to each other for the whole first yeah. half. First two thirds, uh, let's be honest here. Yeah, Mr. Cooper calls the police, but cowardly doesn't mention that Kelly was kidnapped and possibly dead. So, I mean, yeah, this is the point where this happens. He's just like, um, please just come. I, I can't be specific. Yeah, it's like, just say there's a guy. You yeah. can just lie to the police. I mean, I'm like... Hey, like for the record, legally speaking, what are they gonna do? Find yeah, you? Well, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, legal, legally speaking, I'm, I'm not suggesting lying to the police. That's probably a crime. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, wait a minute, guys. Wait a minute. You had us come here and save you for the wrong reasons. <laughs> but yeah, I think. Come on. Understandably, now. if they were able to deal with the rake problem, maybe they'd understand. You would hope. Yeah. Mr. Cooper goes back and tells the rest it's going to be an hour. But then the rest of the movie takes longer than that, <laughs> so the police just never show up for no reason. I mean, I guess they just ignore it. Yeah, probably because he put in a bad phone call. Wait a minute. Later on, a car shows up, and the hunter guy just says, oh, it's just a tourist. And, you know, they go in, and later on, you know, they find someone died in there. Why wasn't that just a police car? That would have made so much more sense. Yeah, Peter. That would have made a whole lot more sense. Oh, because they would have tied up the whole thing. Oh, God. Yeah, I see. We can't keep doing this, but yeah, it's it's hard not to. Yeah. Like, you see what I'm saying, though, right? Where this movie... Yeah, look what you're doing to us. Where, where, like, this movie sets stuff up, and there are, like, blatant ways in which it could pay off, but it just refuses to do so. Like, this, this movie demands... That you sit here and examine it and figure out how you would have made a better movie. This is the scene in the movie where the old man describes the monster, you know, basically in really broad terms. He's just like, ah, it's got long claws and a big eyes or whatever. And interspersed in this scene are clips of Kelly desperately trying to evade the monster in a cave or something. Yeah. And just getting killed, but in a way... To me, it feels like they were supposed to have a whole thing where they go save her and she's just a little injured, but that doesn't happen. So it's just, it's just all pointless. See, yeah. The whole thing. See, this is the, yeah. Cause I wrote a note when that first scene happened where I was like, cause my assumption was that she would escape and show back up and it'd be kind of like a surprise thing. Yeah. And I was like, wow, okay. Yeah, she'd save them, or or they would save her. Somebody would save somebody. Yeah, yeah, and then I, I was kind of like, well, okay, kind of would have been nice to like keep that a surprise, right? I, I, I assumed they were spoiling a a thing that was going to happen. Yeah, but here I'm gonna I'm gonna switch this up a little bit. I'm gonna do a, a reverse workshop. I'm gonna figure out a way to make this worse. So I'm gonna have the ending be that Kelly did survive. But it's because she had to turn herself into a vampire. Oh no, I can I can one up you on how to reverse workshop this because it was a I was no, no no I was seriously worried for a minute that this was like gonna go in this direction. There's like oh. a brief you know I'm kind of skipping ahead here. There are a couple of scenes that show her just kind of dealing with the monster, just kind of like menacing her. You know? Yeah, I mean this is this is the scene, yeah, where she basically gets bitten on the leg and then you never see her again. Yeah. My concern when this stuff was happening was like Oh. Yeah, no no. I think I see what you're about it's to say. It's like it's like the creature is not really attacking her. Is this movie gonna yeah. do that? Did it bring her to a cave? Yeah, for a reason. And I was like, this movie seems like the kind of movie where they might do that. And I was like watching this, and I'm like, to be clear, if they did that, I would not have picked this movie. I just would have went like, nah, no thanks. And I'm calling this off. No, no, I know. But it was like kind of like, you know, like, am I going to have to call this off an hour and a half into this movie because of of this shit? Because this is really going to be how they're going. 
thankfully it doesn't, but it's like the movie was like yeah. edging real close with that kind of thing. Yeah, you know, honestly, the thought did cross my mind, and I'm I am grateful for the small victory that it did not occur. I, <laughs> no, I know. That's the thing. It's like it's like the shit you have to give this movie credit for is so the bar is so low. Oh, the movie didn't go there. I guess you have to give it credit for that. But it's like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's like, yeah. <laughs> like generally expected that, uh, you know, like, I mean, it happens more than you'd like in movies like this. But uh, the real basic of like, yeah, just don't be, just don't be creepy about that kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, in case you guys listening didn't know this about us, we actually do have some standards. Uh, you, you heard it here <laughs> first, folks. I, no, no, I mean, like, to be clear, also, I wanted to pick a better movie. I have a better movie picked out for next time. Okay. Thank God. Yeah. No, I know. I should have laid this out way earlier. We, we're not going to make a habit of digging around in the worst movies. This is a rare occurrence. You know, I, I think every now and then it's nice to cleanse the palate yeah. with, a, with a bad yeah. one. But generally speaking, I think we're going to be sticking with better, better, more notable things. Things you actually want to hear about. Yeah. In fact, uh, <laughs> you know, without giving it away, I found a uh, nice, not too well-known horror movie. It has, you know, won a few awards, but I don't, know, I don't think people really talk about it. And uh, I think it'll be interesting to talk about it. So, it can only be high spirits with Steve Gutenberg. <laughs> no, it's the reboot of the Leprechaun franchise, starring Seamus. The no, no, it's, no I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Oh my god! You know, honestly, you frightened me more than this movie. <laughs> <did>. <laughs> I, I've seen just enough of that to know that that would have been a terrible choice. <laughs> oh yeah. Boy. Okay. To be clear, even if we. I mean, I suppose we'll probably, it's not impossible that we'll, you know, eventually discuss the Leprechaun movies. Yeah, or any other bad movie. For but that. we're not discussing the Leprechaun reboot, because it's uh, not fun. <laughs> that's just not fun. It's not a good movie. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. It should just, it should be fun. It should be fun for the audience and, you know, for ourselves. If it's not fun, then, you know, what are we doing? No, yeah. Now, right? Yeah. I mean, like, this is bad, but, like, I don't know, I'm still getting, I'm kind of having fun with it. And also, there is... The, yeah, we're, ha we're having fun at its expense. Yeah, least. also, I will say, coming up soon, there is a scene with a bit of tension. I'll, I'll give it, a, I'll give the movie credit for mm. it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, Noah shows the footage he took of the raker, you know, on his little camera. Uh, the rake? And the old man just shouts into the viewfinder screen. Uh, yeah, he sold, the, the, uh, I said the rake, not the, not the oh. raker. And also, to be clear, this old man is so old that uh, moving pictures on the screen terrify him. It's maybe the only bad choice of this actor, although I wonder if he was told to do it. I would love to see a behind-the-scenes <laughs> thing where he's, like, refusing, and they're like, You will do this! You will do what I say! Yeah. Why would I, why would I, why would I shout into a screen? That doesn't make I, sense. Like, you should just, just do it! Uh... Yeah, just to be clear, when we said your character was a hunter, we didn't like a hunter gatherer caveman. I am Brian Brewer. Which is about the I'm the director, yeah. the producer, <laughs> the executive producer, the editor, <laughs> and the star of this movie. You will listen to me. Also, again, to be clear, the star of this movie is he basically doesn't push the plot forward at all. And he's always just kind of in the background. Yeah. There are very few scenes where he is like, you could say that he is the lead character. Yeah. Which is why... I, I mean, sort of at the end. I, I, I mean, uh, you know... I mean, not, not to like... Well, no, we've already spoiled it. That's literally just due to process of elimination. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we're, we're getting to near the end now. Anyway. Yeah. There's a lot more scenes, but I think I might just start skipping over this because who cares? <laughs> well, we kind of gloss over some of the like but, okay. individual stuff. It's like it's not really worth it. Yeah. So the hunter says that you know that the raker can't be killed, but I was just thinking that 
it doesn't seem to be that strong. So why don't they just hold it down and then just park a car on top of him? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, that's a really good. That's wouldn't that have been great if that was the end? <laughs> yeah, that's not to like sidetrack too much again. But here we well, go. No, because like the how many horror movies end with them just capturing the monster? Almost none, and I love it when it happens. Yeah, <laughs> it, it seems to promise a sequel that it never delivers. Yeah, like you said, the Reaper doesn't seem that strong. I mean, it has the claws, but just yeah, just like hold it down and just put something heavy on it. What's it gonna do? Yeah, or just encase it in cement, or, or any number of things. Yeah, like yeah. It's a very defeatable monster. You could put it, like, in a burlap sack. <laughs> well, no, it couldn't be burlap. I mean, its claws seem kind of sharp, so, you know, something really strong, you know, I don't know. Some kind of, like, metallic tarp or a net or something. Yeah. Jade mourns Kelly. Noah tells a sad story about his mom dying in a car accident. I don't know why he's bringing this up. I guess just to be relatable. Yeah. I think it's it has something to do with Jade not blaming herself for letting go of Kelly, so they sort of share in mourning. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of nice. In a better movie, this would be a good scene, but, I mean, this is the only times they, they have this kind of a moment, so... Yeah, I don't know. It's not bad, it's just kind of who cares. Kennedy and Mr. Cooper sit down and have some downtime conversation. Shouldn't they be saving Kelly? I mean, I thought that was the whole point of this movie. Yeah. I mean, isn't that the feeling you had when she got kidnapped? You're like, oh, the sweet, innocent girl who did nothing wrong that everybody likes. Wouldn't they all just go save her? I did think that was eventually going to... Something was going to happen with that. That's why I assumed that when they did those cutaways, it's like, oh, she's going to get away. Yeah, and then she's going to come back later on and they'll, like... She'll reunite with her sister and there will be, like, some kind of arc there. Yeah, maybe in a better movie. Instead, you get a scene where Mr. Cooper says to Kennedy, I see you. You're smart. You're funny. You're kind. Three incorrect assertions. <laughs> yeah. It's... I mean, not to be cruel, but she is absolutely none of those things. No. Yeah. She's been nothing but mean and frankly kind of dumb the whole movie. Like, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, that's the role thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I have, to be clear, I have no problem with her character being the mean girl. You know, that is this place. So finally someone arrives. You know, this is the point when they think it's the police, but it's just some random person. Mr. Cooper and Noah go out to see who it is. I was thinking at this moment, is there more than one raker? Because if not, then it might be a good idea to lure the creature away from Kelly by going outside getting it to come after you. That also would have been a good way to just keep her alive, you know, because she's only going to do stuff for a day, right? So maybe they should have just spent the rest of the movie delaying him so that Kelly would live. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, yeah. I got to stop trying to fix the movie. (laughs) That would have been good, though. No, it's like, keep saying it. This movie demands that you find ways to fix it. It's, like, fascinating in that regard. Yeah. It's like a lot of of movies... I was actually like a lot of movies can just be bad, but this one is really bad in ways you see the little like hint of like, oh, okay, yeah, that's just no, it's easy. That's how you fix it. (laughs) Wouldn't it have been great if the hunter guy, you know, he says, oh, it can't be killed, you know, and and, they could have said like, oh, well, why? And it's like, oh, well, I shot one with a shotgun or I stabbed it or whatever. And then the next, you know, the next day or the next year, it struck again, the same as before. And then later on, they could have had a scene where there was multiple rakes, but he didn't know that. Or rakers, whatever the hell they Rakes. Yeah, so he's, you know, so he could be leading them out there. Yeah, here's the hunting ground. Here's where I killed it. And he actually finds that creature's body. And he feels really, really bad. Yeah. I could have been stopping him all this time. (laughs) I could see something like that. Oh, you know what? That would actually. Oh, 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 seems to always be where it needs to be. Peter, I'm sorry. I have to workshop things yeah. again. Okay, so. All right. That be- but only this, just this one okay, more time. That beginning scene with the parents and the kid, the dad or the mom, when the rake comes to kill them, manages to fight back and wound it. And he, as a kid, 
sees the creature yeah. and is able to be hurt, and later on he uses that knowledge yeah. to help the hunter hunt down the creature and kill it. Yeah, because spoiler alert, the way it currently exists as a film, his having... Wait, do we explain this yet? But yeah, Mr. Cooper's a little kid, so yeah, there's, there's that. I, uh... But also him being the little kid at the beginning reveals nothing and it helps nothing. No, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's no arc. There's no... I don't know why it's even in there, actually. I, I'm not sure why it's in the Well, film. that's why it keeps saying that, it, like, I feel like the movie feels like it was written all, you know, linear way. Where, like, if you went back, you would go... you And you took a look at stuff that happened previously, you'd be like, oh, right, I foreshadowed something there. I need to use that, and then you would re rearrange things, fix things up, and instead the movie just continues on with new things happening without any regard to the past stuff happening. So anyway, to the next inconsistency. Um, yeah, they get to the car, you know, they find no one in it, except for some red raspberry-looking jam spread out all over the mm. place. How... How convenient for them that they don't have to cast any other characters. Yeah, there's not even a corpse. It's just like <laughs> gore spray. Thank God. Yeah. It would have been funnier, though, if, if it had been like a mannequin. And it, it cuts off just below the neck so you can't see. I bought this at a department store. Down comes the raker onto the car roof. Noah and Mr. Cooper go back to back, facing their lights both ways as they're walking away like a crab. Mm. I thought that was a cool idea, actually. This is like the one scene in the movie that even hints at the idea that, that there could be tension. So Oh, so that's the tense scene you were talking about. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, I'll, give, I'll, I'll give them credit. It's like the bare minimum of what you do with a movie like this, but it's there. You know? Yeah. It, they don't it, really explore why the thing's light-sensitive or anything, so... It, I yeah, I mean, whatever. Like I said, the movie doesn't seem terribly interested in dealing with the rake at all, so that just fits. Yeah. Sure, it is a weakness. Why? Who cares? Unfortunately, this is a horror movie, so batteries are always running out super fast. Noah's smartphone is almost dead. Mr. Cooper, my phone is almost dead. Oh wait, I've got my portable charger on me. We're totally safe. Who knew spending 20 bucks on a handy portable battery would one day save my life? I'm just imagining it turning into a commercial. I'm sorry. No, yeah, fair enough. Man, this is so useful. I'm just like putting it right in the middle of a horror film. Man, we were right about to die, weren't we? I'm so glad I have this portable charger. I mean, this movie isn't well known enough to attract product placement, but it does seem shameless enough to do it. <laughs> He doesn't have that charger, so Noah's phone goes dead. So the two of them make a break for it. Noah immediately trips. Just leave him, man. Nobody would hold it against you, Mr. Cooper. Just, just go. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. As soon as you run, it's like the first step he trips. He's just like, oh! -ho -ho! <sighs> I mean, like, what are, you, what are we supposed to do with you, Noah? I guess I'll give the movie credit for it being the guy to do that. So the raker grabs Noah's ankles, and this is the second time the monster has grabbed somebody's ankles and just yanked on mm -hmm. them. It seems like a remarkably unscary way to attack someone. Uh, it does. Just kind of tug of war. Also, him. it being the fact that the teacher was able to, uh, you know, hey, spoilers, grab Noah away from uh, the rake kind of undercuts this thing being scary. Because, I mean, like, yeah. it feels like you just, like, I mean, at that rate, why not just punch it? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Kick its ass. I think the monster's weak from having eaten too many <laughs> people. I mean, at that rate, I mean... It's too <laughs> full. Look, I'm sorry, if the, if, if the teacher can overpower the monster, yeah, just, like, flash some lights at it and get in the circle and just start kicking its ass. What's it gonna do? Yeah. And then you park a car. Yes. Yeah, this, this monster is too defeatable. So only now does the old man finally grab his shotgun and go outside. He scares the, the monster away with a flare. Flares come in packs, so maybe give everyone an extra. <laughs> yeah, gosh. 
this guy's just hiding that, them. That actually would have been super important later on. In fact, very yeah. soon. Kennedy hugs Mr. Cooper, and Kennedy thanks the old man for, you know, protecting them and stuff. Belatedly. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Earlier, she also showed some appreciation to Cooper for essentially putting up with her. This is her arc for the movie. I mean, at least she has one. Jade tends to Noah's wounded legs. And, you know, he's just like, well, why are you doing this? And she's just like, we're friends, aren't we? You know, which is something he said earlier. You know, they're doing that scripty thing, you know, where you repeat a thing you said earlier to show a bond. It's nice, I guess. She rolls up his pant leg and you see the absolute lack of a wound. <laughs> which is great. It's just like some red smear yeah. that someone put on his leg. I love it because she says, that looks pretty bad. I mean, the... Uh, Noah thanks her, they share a moment. I, I think she, she meant yeah. that the idea of the wound looks really bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Conceptually, concept. that wound looks terrible. It's interesting. The next scene is Noah going to charge his phone. It's mundane, but I, I thought... At first, that it was a clever thing to do because, you know, maybe things were going to work out and, and you were going to need that phone. But uh, he, spoiler alert, dies shortly hereafter. So there's no point in having a shot of him charging the phone. Uh, yes, there is. Is there? Uh, isn't that what causes, spoilers, the power to go out? Oh, God, I forgot about that. No, you're right. Yeah, it's it's just for him to create more chaos. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh God, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, that's so that's so ridiculous. Yeah, the power goes out. Yeah, this is like the next page of my nose. I totally forgot. Yeah. So the power goes out and and Noah's just like, I think I blew a fuse when I plugged in the phone. What if what kind of a house is this? Yeah, I was gonna say, like oh well, okay, you know what? I have to give the movie a little bit of credit because you know what? When I was uh living in Mapleton, Oregon I had to deal with that kind of thing all the time, where you couldn't what, really? uh, couldn't have the refrigerator, the AC, and uh, the microwave on at the same time, and you had to make a choice. Uh, okay. So, it happens, but uh, that being said, I feel like that house is a little bit too modern for that. But yeah, you can... Yeah, I mean, also, this old man, he's a hunter... He's been dealing with this monster for 36 years, twice a year, because it's every Equinox. And he probably bought this house. I don't know if he designed it, but the fuse box is outside. So why would... Why? Why? Why would you do this to yourself, old man? Yeah. It's it's like the house is designed to kill him. Exactly. That's That's exactly what it is. And also, as I said before, I think the monster creates entropy. Everything breaks around it. The batteries run out, cars don't start, house fuses just blow. I'm sorry, I I really hate that idea because that, that like excuses all of the bad Corey shit in this movie. And I don't like it. It's like the Final Destination films, you know, where like death is just encouraging the monster to win somehow. I mean, that's fine because it's like that's like creative at least. <laughs> Yeah. Like, this is just, the, that's just an excuse for the same old shit. There's this weird shot of the raker running past the front of the house like he's going like a thousand miles an hour. I don't know that it matters or anything. I just, it's just such a strange shot. I just wanted to note it. So maybe the monster has super speed, but I mean, he never uses it later. So I, I don't know what, what this shot is supposed to mean. Yeah. Well, it's also especially weird because later on, all it does is uh, menace people like a member of the Putty Patrol. Yeah. The Putties? You mean from uh, Power Rangers? Yeah. It just kind of stands there, like, moving its arms, and it's like, all right, dude. All right. No, I'm like, tell... What a rewatch that. Rewatch that last little bit in the house when the power goes off and tell me you can't, you can't see it. Well, I mean, yeah. It's a 90s reference. Only people who've actually watched that era of Power Rangers are going to know what the hell you're talking about. I, that's, you know, that's fine. That reference was only for them. It's a little gift from us to you. Yeah. But you know what? Let's uh, enjoy it. 
I'm not going to make you see. No, I, you know, I refuse to apologize for that. I will yeah. reference what I please. And yeah, really, if anything, it's your fault if you don't get it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm confused by this part. I think I might have miswatched this because originally I wrote the old man fixes the fuse and then I crossed it out. And then I wrote the old man fails to fix the fuse. Does he drop the 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 fuse? Is that what happens? Um, as near as I can tell, he gets out to fix the fuse. Yeah. Sees the creature out in the like edges of the light from his flare, and yeah. spontaneously decides to commit suicide. Yeah. <laughs> I thought maybe that was after he had messed something. I thought I had missed something because it doesn't really make sense. I mean, earlier he did say he's like, I'm never going to run again. Yeah, so he just... You know, but dying... He decided... doesn't help, you know. Oh, no, yeah, he decides he's never going to run again before helping everyone get the fuse fixed. So... Yeah. A little selfish on his part, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I mean... He should have, like, reached for it like he was about to fix it. And then he, like, looks at them through the window. Because they're all, like, crowded around the window like the Scooby gang watching him try to do it. <laughs> and uh, he should have just winked at him. He'd be like, yeah, I'm sure you guys will figure something out. Whatever, see ya. Yeah, wink at them, swallow the fuse, and then walk out and get killed by the rake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Over my dead body. I mean, that's basically what he does. <laughs> Oh, you want this fixed? Maybe you should come out here and do it. Yeah. I mean, there's basically no reason for it. Like, he, like, here's the creature, you know, the rake, like, yeah. around, but it's like, dude, you know it's there. Nothing changed. Just go fix the light. It's been like that for 36 years. It's like... Yeah, like all the time. It's weird, because it just kind of feels like... Well, twice well, feel, because of the equinox. It feels like the writer didn't properly come up with a reason to not fix the the circuit breaker. You just... Yeah. Once again, something doesn't work. The old man points the shotgun and it just jams as he tries to fire it. Nothing works. Yeah. So he fights the raker kind of awkwardly and he loses right away. And everyone inside gets to watch the raker feasting on the old man's bowels. Yeah. Rest in pieces, old guy. It's all downhill from here. You know what? It honestly is. <laughs> so oh, wait, wait, says, wait. I think it's oh, Mr. Cooper. I will say, huh? I will say, except for one pretty funny moment coming up. But uh, we'll get to that. Oh. Um, I think it's Mr. Cooper. He says... It's 4 a.m., so they have two hours until sunrise, so all they have to do is make it, you know, and they've got some candles and stuff they could just hole up. Mm -hmm. Only now do they lock the doors, so that the doors have been unlocked this whole time. It just Again, this just makes them look like morons. But they lock two of the doors, and then they hear a third door open, so I guess they didn't know about that one. Yeah. And so they go to investigate the noise of the door opening and an albino goblin emerges from the shadows. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you've gotten a few good looks at it beforehand, but, uh, this is probably, yeah, this is probably the worst of it. The longest, the most sustained examination of the costume. Yes. Yeah. Kind of looks like the creatures from, uh, the descent. I was going to say, yeah, a little bit like the descent. I still like Lord of the Rings work. Or goblin. Sure, yeah. Although, I don't know why it might, like... It doesn't look 100% like it, but it reminded me also of those creatures from that movie Feast. I don't know if you remember that. I'm not sure if I've seen all of Feast. It reminded me a little bit of the monsters from Pandorum that were, like, humans that turned into monsters that ate people. Yeah, I mean... I guess there's no two ways about it. It's a decent enough costume, but the design is pretty generic. It's not bad, and I think if it, if it was utilized in a better movie, it wouldn't have been bad at all. I mean, it's a full-body latex suit, so the guy has total freedom of movement. It, it's natural-looking. Yeah. It's not bad. The face is a little rough, but only if you look at it for too long. So it, it should have probably been moving without facing the camera as much. Yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, credit where credit's due. It's a better costume than this movie deserved. <laughs> it really helps salvage the movie. Especially for horror films, you really have to spend the money on the creature just to make it resemble a film. You know, if you if you can't even do that, then you don't really have a movie. Yeah, I know. I will say, like, I'll give the movie credit for that because there there are some movies that just like really cheap out on that stuff. But like, you know, the movie had the priority yeah. of at least you know get a half decent costume for the monster. Well done, Brian Brewer. <laughs> well done. So yeah, the raker uh, rips up Noah. And then gets scared away by flashlights, I guess. I mean, sometimes he seems to be scared by flashlights, and other times he's not. It's a little inconsistent. Yeah, and other times he can uh, stare right into a road flare and not be bothered at all. Or, spoiler alert for later, uh, just stand with partial sunlight <laughs> on his face and not seem to mind. <laughs> oh, man. I can't wait. Yeah, we're getting there. Mr. Cooper doesn't look very concerned that Noah has been fatally wounded. Mm hmm I mean, he, Noah's just laying there dying. And I, I was just thinking, like, should we put pressure on the wound? <laughs> no, let's wait and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. It's in God's hands now. <laughs> yeah, what do you... Like, they all just kind of let him die. Yeah. I mean, I don't think... Well, sort of. Jade gets really mad. But, I mean, you know, she didn't help very much to stop it either. No. I mean, really... But she gets so mad. She gets so mad that she just grabs a flashlight and just runs after the raker to do something i mean i don't know what yeah also also but all it does is give him an opportunity to kill her real quick yeah okay peter also it's killing me that you keep calling the rake the raker i mean i know the movie is called is it really called the rake? yeah i mean i know the movie's called the raking but it's 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 just the rake oh I'm, okay well i'm sorry I, <laughs> it's how i wrote it and i just said no know. i know i just like i'm i don't know what this thing is no i know i'm just I'm shocked that this is a thing, even. I, I'm actually kind of pleased that it's a creepypasta. I bet it's better in whatever form that is I, you know, than, than it is in this movie. I will, I will say, I, I do wish I had, like, maybe had a little extra time to listen to a few more stories of the rake. I have listened to a few, and they're not bad. The thing about creepypasta stories, like ones dealing with the rake, is that they're invariably how, like a, like fake detailing of someone encountering a monster. So there's only there's only so much you can do with that. But like as a consequence, there's also only so bad it can get. You know what I mean? Oh. It's funny, because it kind of feels like the limited focus of those types of stories create a, a like a, a floor where it's like it can only get so bad because it's someone relaying how they encounter the creature. You know what I mean? They like can't. Oh yeah, you mean because of the filter of their experience? Yeah, because like you can't like it's generally. I mean, generally speaking, not going to get too sidetracked or like too like off the rails. It's going to be, hey, I saw this thing. Maybe I ran away or whatever, and then that's the end of it. They're never going to be like art. But it's like, oh, okay, all right. That was creepy enough. It fit, like, the format. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so, like, generally speaking, I, I feel like the few rake stories I've read have been, you know, they're, they're all right. I mean, I don't think anyone who's, like, listening to this is going to be inspired to, like, read those stories. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, if people have, I don't know, I, maybe they'll get something out of this. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you never I, know. yeah, I heard to say. I mean, I want to speak to well, like okay. authoritatively. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. So yeah, like I said, Jade gets mad. She grabs a flashlight. She walks after the rake and just gets killed. Well, no, not killed. She gets grabbed by the neck, thrown. Her ankle shatters, and then the rake runs in after her and yanks on her leg until the leg gets ripped off. Mm -hmm. I think, but they don't really show it. I there's so I'm not sure. There is some decent gore effects there, though. Like, I, like yeah, there's some good close-ups of a broken. I, yeah. I will say it's actually kind of weird, especially considering some of the stuff you see immediately afterwards. The gore effects on that scene, they're good. 
you know, credit where credit's due. Yeah. I mean, probably the best in the movie. It's weird. This movie isn't actually that gory. Yeah, no, not really. But, you know, it's a good effect. And Jade does the, uh, you know, go on without me, I can't move <laughs> thing. Yeah. And I love that they listen to her. It's such a co-ed college thing where they're just like, whatever, okay, bye. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like you anyway. <laughs> yeah, we, you didn't like me, and I didn't like you, so... I, Goodbye. I mean, look, to be, to be fair, I feel like if someone gave me that speech, I'd probably, if I didn't think I could save them, I'd just go. I can spend too much time yeah. worrying about that. I mean... Only since you asked, I shall go. I, I mean... That's the excuse. At a certain point, it's like, even if you don't say anything, I'm, I'm getting... They should have had her change her mind halfway, like, as they're leaving. Like, wait, 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 come back! And they just keep going. I feel second wind! Ah! I can't make it! <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, she does die seconds afterwards, so... Yeah. Yeah, it, it might as well have been that. I... God. I feel like you could make a movie with a lot of those, like, farcical ideas of like yeah that would be actually really funny to have that be in the movie <laughs> i guess i don't i mean it's like the uh it's like the old man who like just can't convince those kids to not go out there oh yeah it would be in that movie absolutely <laughs> yeah. yeah which like I, okay i was i was thinking about it and it would be so it would be so much funnier if it was like a like super irrelevant old tiny bigotry like they were like irish ghosts or something so he's oh, like yeah. warning people about the irish out there and it's like who the hell's gonna listen to that you sound like you yeah. sound like a you sound like a maniac singing that you gotta watch out for the hessians yeah it's like, what? Yeah, it's like uh, so i'm sorry yeah so this is this is right near the end of the movie so yeah let's just try to yeah, wrap this crap yeah, up yeah, <laughs> They ditch out on Jade. She gets eaten off off camera, which is just kind of shameful as a filmmaker. I mean, you can't even dignify the second best actress with a good death. Mr. Cooper and Kennedy go to climb out a window. It's apparently two hours. You know, remember they said it was two hours until sunrise, and I guess that's now because it's kind of daylight out there now. Mm -hmm. This is my favorite scene. This this part right here. Kennedy is about to go out. <laughs> First, she stops and says. I can't go without you. And then without a single moment's thought, teacher's assistant, Mr. Ethan Cooper, says, okay, and just leaves first. <laughs> I like just you might as well have just shoved her out of the way. Like, oh, get out of the way, you're going too slow. It's it's a brief scene, but uh it's memorable for that. You know, you could see many guys do that in horror movies. No, like never. It's 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 beautifully craven. Look, it's it's just it's the greatest moment of this entire movie. <laughs> it's like it not only oh, not only is it craven, the movie doesn't portray it as craven. Yeah, but he's just like, well, if you're gonna you know get out of the way, I'll yeah I'll go. Yeah, he, no, that's just it's just treated as yeah. No, she just said she basically just said you can go first. That's fine. Yeah. Like, there's no, there, it's like the movie passes no moral judgment on him for doing that. No, not really. So, yeah, he gets outside, and of course, she crawls out after him and just gets dragged right back inside, as we all thought would happen. Yeah. Bravo. <laughs> I just want to give you a standing ovation, Mr. Cooper. <laughs> no, save that for the ending. Mr. Cooper runs to the door to go back in to try to save her. Oh, yeah, that's right. You guys locked all the doors. What an oopsie doopsie. <laughs> yeah. He finally finds a door. I guess this must be the third door that the monster went in. He runs inside, finds the raker holding the seemingly life lifeless body of Kennedy aloft with a single pale goblin hand. And yeah, this is the point when sunlight is dappling the raker. <laughs> See, I keep wanting to say the raker. I know. The rake's face. And I just wrote, shouldn't he be more bothered by that? Because, I mean, uh, yeah, this was, like, his whole thing. Yeah, it's, yeah, no, to be clear, it's it's bright out, and yeah. you can see entirely too much of the rake. Yeah, also, the cops should have been there, like, two hours ago. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's besides the point, and that was earlier, but, I mean, like I said, 
hours have passed. More than enough time. Oh, yeah. And there's this weird part where, as the monster's holding up her body, either she says or he says, I remember you. And I don't know if it's the monster saying it or if he's puppeting I think he, Kennedy to make her say I it. I think he's puppeting her to say it. You mean like in Killer Clowns from Outer Space when the, the sheriff is puppeted by the clown? Uh, yeah, exactly that way. Yes. That'll remain with me forever because I saw that as a little kid. And I remember <laughs> that part where the, uh, the dean from Animal House is just dead and he's just like, all we want to do is kill you. <laughs> I... Ah! That's a... God, that's a good movie. Uh, yeah, another, we will definitely do that. Yeah, another, another time. But yeah, yeah, I guess he's just like puppeting her, and I guess, I guess the rake can puppet people to talk. Maybe he just has this power. I mean, this is one of his weird powers, like when he was able to reach through a stone wall and scratch her back. That wasn't a power. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't do that. It's not a power. Bad filmmaking is. It's not a power. Mr. Cooper suddenly remembers his own backstory of having watched his parents be murdered by the same thing. Yeah. I love it. He reaches for his wound, which I guess must, you know, like there's an old scar. I guess it must be on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. They don't show it there, but you just infer it because they show a flashback of the big rubbery monster hand scratching this little boy's shoulder in the car. Mm -hmm. Ah, I'm not going to kill you, but I'll give you a little scratch. The raker forces his finger claws through Kennedy's neck from behind, and she dies. I, it's actually a really cool death. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's, I think it's great. It's, it's, a, it's a fun effect. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it looks really good. Well, it should probably have a little more blood, since there isn't really any, but it, it's a cool thing. It makes him seem strong. Yeah. If the monster's strong, this is the only time he demonstrates it. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's, a, it's not a gory effect, but it, it's fun. It's neat. Yeah. And then Mr. Cooper sees this and then just bravely closes the door <laughs> and waits until the monster leaves. It's... God, it's so it's so great. He just holds onto the knob and just listens. It's so great uh, to have such a relatable main character in a horror movie. One who has no problem leaving a, behind a pitiful... his Yeah. <laughs> just a wretch of a man. Yeah. You know what? Because like who can say? That you wouldn't be the guy to slam the door right in the face of the monster and just go, oh god, oh god, hope it doesn't come through. Yeah. Which reminds me of, before this, the, the most shameful scene I'd seen in a movie was in that movie uh, Leviathan. <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> yes. when there's like a leech attached to a man's body and he's like reaching for help, like, help me please! And the guy just gets so weirded out by the scene that he just flees before his friend can be helped. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a good one. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Such a shameful scene. <laughs> I like a good shameful scene in a horror movie. I don't know why. I, I think it's because it hits different parts of you. You know, like your pride and stuff. You're just like, oh, wow. Yeah. That wounded me a different way. <laughs> yeah, there's something to that. But I mean, like, I mean, at least in Leviathan. Well, I mean, I guess in this one, too. Uh, it could be a source of comedy. <laughs> I mean, the, it's both. It's both. I things. mean, this one's really funny because it's also framed almost like a comedic scene. Because he could, yeah, he's just like, I'm just gonna close this. Well, door. yeah, because yeah, he could. You see the full body shadow monster, you know, going like ooga booga, and he's just like, oh, close the door. Yep. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Makes sense to me. Yeah. He just waits until he hears glass break, and he knows a monster left. I guess. Although, spoiler alert, it didn't leave, so what did it do? Just broke something and waited? Uh, eh, whatever, who cares? Yeah, also, like, left into the sunlight. Yeah, where would it go? I, God damn it. The, I this know. whole last bit, just like, I don't get it. Yeah. Wouldn't it just go into hibernation in a room, you know, or, or something? I, uh, yeah. I don't know. It's bad. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's bad. This would do, like, a dismissive hand wavings. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah. yeah, honestly. Kennedy is dead. Her body's on the floor. Mr. Cooper... Actually, I think it's on the bed. What, it's what, on the bed. Mr. Cooper, once again, he only looks vaguely concerned. He closes her eyes with his hands. Oh, and then he pulls out her gift. The one that he wasn't allowed to, to open yet. You know, but now it's tomorrow, so he gets to open the gift. See, he's a rule follower, you know? This is important. I swear, like, I hate that 
of all the setups to pay off, it's yeah. that? That's yeah. the one they go with? He opens the present, and it's there's a little note inside that says, you're worth giving country music a chance, Kennedy. And it's two tickets to something. I didn't even bother to see what it was. Uh, yeah, <laughs> dude, it doesn't matter. Whoever. Why don't you say, like, Garth Brooks or something? Sure, that makes sense. Well, it's 2017. There's got to be someone, you know, newer than that. I'm sorry, country people. I don't know your stuff. Uh Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Tyler McSomething? I don't know. Oh, that, I don't know that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. They had two tickets to Tyler McDyler, but uh, unfortunately mm-hmm. they didn't make it. Yeah. So Mr. Cooper opens the door to leave. He stops at the front door and just kind of looks out, and he has this reflective moment, you know, as if like, Oh, man, I was so helpless when I was a little kid watching my parents die. And then as an adult, I had all these choices I could have done to save these people, but I didn't. And I'm going to have to reflect on this for the rest of my life. This is going to be painful for me. And then he just dies. Uh, Okay. You're kind of glossing over it because he doesn't just, uh, (laughs) he doesn't just, uh, like, the movie doesn't just imply that he's killed because of, and reaches out from within the room and pulls him back in. It is yeah. shot and framed like a joke, like a punchline from a comedy sketch. Yeah. Where he's just pulled in and it's like, whoa! And the movie just ends right there, right there. Like, I mean, he, he, even hold, he even waves his hands in the air like, I didn't expect this! Boom! Yeah, and that's the end of the movie. That's it. You've been raked. Not, not maybe how I'd phrase that. Um, but you know, <laughs> Jesus, it's like that's the final shot in the movie, and it feels like it's like the yeah. it, it's like the end of a comedy sketch. Well, I think maybe he was since he was the director. I think he was trying to soften a rather bleak ending by having it be a little silly. So I guess it kind of does that. I think you're giving it too much credit. <laughs> I think it's weird. The monster, like, pretended to leave, and then it just came back to kill him in the middle of daylight. Yeah, I think it's weird that the monster that hates the light was out in the daylight. That's the weird part to me. Well, also that, <laughs> yeah. There's a couple inconsistencies in this film, Jacob. Yeah, weird. It's almost like it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes, that's the movie. Um, I don't know if there's anything notable in the credits, because I turned this crap off as soon as it ended. Yeah, same here, man. I don't know. Maybe there's a mid credit scene. I don't care. I, uh, yeah, Sam Jackson showed up at the end. You think you're the only one that rakes things? I wanted to see how many roles Brian Brewer had given himself in the movie, mm-hmm. but I, I just, I, yeah, I just couldn't muster the will. I'm sorry. <laughs> I uh, yeah, it's just too much. There's only so much a man can bear. Yeah, I mean, to be to be clear, by the end of the movie, you're not gonna feel like sitting through this. It's not like yeah. I'm kind of making the ending sound funny. It is funny. It's not funny enough to, like, justify sitting through it. Yeah, like, you're you're out at that point. Oh, wait a minute. I think I did let the, the credits run because I I spaced out. I, I mean, I wasn't paying attention, so I'm sure I was just, you know, I mean, you know <laughs> doing something on my phone. But it, it, there was a part at the end. I thought there was a secret ending. I forgot about this. Yeah, because um, on Tubi... It just plays into the next movie on what, I don't know, some kind of suggested list, I guess, from what you just watched. Yeah. And it started playing something called The Retreat. Yes. And when it did, I'm like, the soundtrack was great. The cinematography was good. It was like sweeping over a forest. And I'm like, oh my God, did he do something great with his, oh no, this is a whole other movie. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I didn't didn't think it was a different movie, but I did... Yeah, I guess for whatever reason, it does go into the retreat. I haven't watched it, but uh, better cinematography. Yeah, just those couple seconds of footage. It seemed pretty nice. I'll give, I'll give the retreat a yeah. strong maybe. Maybe it's good. Not an expert. Okay, so this movie. Oh, yeah, right. This movie, The Raker, the one that we just reviewed. Okay, first of all, um, it got 12%. It's The Raking. Oh, what, whatever. Who cares? Whatever it's called. Yeah, okay, The Raking, featuring Johnny the Raker. It's got 12% on Rotten Tomatoes. 12%, Jacob. 
Yeah, I mean, that's better than I thought. Yeah, Metacritic didn't even bother to give it a score. It acts like it doesn't exist. Yeah, that makes sense. And just, you know, for an extra number, I it has four and a half out of ten on IMDb, which seems way too generous. Yeah, what the hell is that about? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how that system works, and I don't usually bother to, to bring it up. Yeah, I guess fair enough. Maybe it's more customer-based, and, you know, people are more generous with a horror film. You know, if you hit certain beats... I don't know. To some extent, I am a little bit of that kind of a fan. I think if you do a certain amount of things, my satisfaction reaches a minimum to where I'm not unhappy I watched a movie. But that doesn't mean I want to spread that out in the world. You know what I mean? Like, I'd rather movies be made better. Yeah. I mean, well, that's why, like, well, like to be clear, like, while I think this is a bad movie, you know, like, I've suggested a lot of things that are different, or, you know, that would improve it, it's because I'd like, I'd like to see you more good movies out there and, and i feel like, yeah maybe brian brewer will surprise us in the future i, uh, I mean maybe i don't know i'm open to that idea i haven't seen his other movies yeah i don't know i feel a little bit bad because like i don't like movies to be bad but i mean i gotta be honest this one's pretty bad okay so on that note how would you rate this film jacob Ooh, strong three out of 10. Hmm. Interesting. I thought you were going to give it a 2. No, no. No, I've seen 2s. <laughs> like, a 2 is this movie, but like somehow more incoherent and the monster looks dumber. Yeah, I think once you hit a certain threshold of badness, you actually have to inspire active dislike and hatred for a film. Yeah. Like, you have to have lost something for having seen it. Like, the world is a less good place than the movie exists. Yeah, I mean, like... Like, that level of badness. I mean, like, okay, I'm gonna, like... I don't want to judge a movie without seeing it, but I'm going to do this. I'm looking at movies right now, okay. right now on Tubi, and I'm, thinking, I'm looking at stuff that I would probably rate, like, a two. And I'm looking at shit like Clown Face, which is, <laughs> like, it's, like, just some dude with suspenders with a clown mask. It's, like... That's probably just going to make me feel bad, and it's just going to be shit, you know? Yeah, the the movie Clown, I don't know if you ever saw that. That's probably a two for me. I, I really hate that movie. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, like... And that was directed by Eli Roth. <laughs> oh, wait, is that the one with the uh, the demon skin? Okay. Yeah. I, demon skin clown suit. I, uh, here's the thing. I could never rate that a two because I enjoyed the premise too much. Yeah. Sorry, that's too good to not give some credit for. Yeah, well, it was also at a time when I was watching multiple clown werewolf type movies, or I mean, you know, where they, like you become a clown like as a curse or a suit. They also had that in a couple other movies. Yeah, that is uh, weirdly common for those kinds of movies. I don't get that, but... Uh... Yeah, odd theme to keep coming back. <laughs> okay, so I would rate it... Hmm, let me think. It took bravery to make this movie. It also took bravery to watch this movie. I, I wish I could say this is the worst movie I've seen, but I'm a horror fan, so... I, you know, I'm with you. I, I think 3 out of 10 is is a proper score. Yeah. It's bad, but it's not the worst. It's, <laughs> uh, it's, it's below competent, but it's not utterly incompetent. You know, like, there, there's enough here... There's a little sparkles in the poo, you know, little bits of corn that, like, make it okay, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't see doing a two or a one unless I really just actively hate a movie or just, you know, left a bad taste in my mouth or whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I feel like even, like, an especially bad movie with bad effects, that's, like, if it's trying, I'd still give it some, like, goodwill just because you were, you know, the attempt was made. It would have, yeah, it would have to be like a... I think I... I do feel like it would have to be like a movie that left a bad taste in my mouth in like... Not in a like... Because I don't mind if a movie has like a dark ending or whatever, but if it's just like, well, what the hell was the point of this? Yeah. I think if these characters had remained more two-dimensional, if they actually had stayed unpleasant the whole movie, I might have given it one less. Just because of how unpleasant it would be to go through the whole thing. You know, with people never learning anything or growing as characters. So I guess I'll give the movie credit for that. At least they bothered. I mean, it was ultimately pointless because they all die. But at least it showed that 
the people had some dimension before they died. I mean, yeah, I would even, like, you know, there are movies that would rate higher that have worse character development in them. So, I mean, it, it has that going for it. All right. I'm going to do the, the IMDb keywords. There's only six this time. Hell yes. So it's pretty quick. All right. Yeah, I mean, it, this is, you know, because this is all determined by popularity and people just actually bringing stuff up. <laughs> so, you yeah, know, we're probably one of the only people. In fact, we have to be the people who have rated. Or we reviewed this more thoroughly than anybody. Nobody. We are first in the world here, Jacob. I, first in the that world. could be the case, yeah. Yeah. So, so there's there's not much here. So yeah, I'll just without further ado, let's let's read them off. Okay. First one, darkness. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. Two car won't start. <laughs> That's so specific. Why would they? Oh no! I that's something I would definitely rate in a horror film because there's a lot of movies that where cars. No, it is, but it's just like that's not even like a big thing within the movie. Well, remember there was that car commercial for somebody. I don't remember which company it was, but they were just showing all those scenes from horror movies where they were trying to get a car to work and like you know they were screaming and stuff like "Come on, come on, come on!" I do remember that. Yeah, it was a good ad. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah. So number three. Urban legend. Yeah. I guess in the movie it's an urban legend. I don't know if a creepypasta counts. I mean, it sort of does. Yeah, I'll, I mean, yeah, I'll count. I'll count. I think it does. Close enough. Yeah. Four, monster. Yeah, I mean, there is a monster in it. Five, killed off camera. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of those, actually. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> <laughs> and number six, neck slashing. Well, who gets there? I mean, I guess it. Well, it's it's Kennedy at the end with the fingers through the back of her throat. It's not really a slash. Yeah, I don't know if I have to. Jesus, this might be one of the first ones I have to like really strongly reject. That's not a slashing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's more of a gouging. Yeah, it's gouging, stabbing. It's not a slashing. Sorry, man. Whoever yeah. wrote that up, uh, you're wrong. Well, I mean, in your defense, I mean, you might be right, because people will give little recommendations for the keywords. They'll vote them up or down, mm -hmm. and nobody voted up the relevance of next slashing. Everybody agreed to the rest of them except for that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Listen, semantically, it should be stabbing. I'm not going to say anyone cares. I'm just saying if we're talking about accuracy. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was the raking, Jacob. How you feeling? Um, haggard, tired, uh, depleted. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is like, to be honest, this is already a long day, and then I had to, like, sit through this shit. So, like, I'm probably going to go to bed after this. Like, I'm, I'm, just, I'm tired. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. De I don't really have, definitely. I want to go to bed. <laughs> well, Listen, for, you know, the handful of people who have made it to the end of this podcast, I just, I hope you have a great rest of the day. And I'm just grateful that you chose us to listen to us pick apart a movie you'll probably never watch yourselves. Yeah. No, yeah, to be clear, uh, don't watch it. Listen to us describe it. <laughs> uh, I mean, you've already sat through the description if you're at this point. But yeah, you know what I mean? Don't watch it. It's bad. So, until next time, I'm Peter. Uh, I'm Jacob. And this has been Gorman on Gore. Bye. Now, oh, can I? I'm done. <laughs> this, yeah, this is shit. I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Much longer than that movie deserved. I probably should have abbreviated it. Eh, whatever. You know what, Noah? You're growing on me. Oh, okay.